We love finding epic, ready-to-go road trips that take the guesswork out of planning. But sometimes I just want to pick somewhere on the map, drive there, and create my own journey. And in this series, that's exactly what we're going to do. Hey, I'm Jamie and this is Doug. And if you don't know, we love going on adventures, seeing new places, and eating delicious food. Doug got a work ban back in 2020, right before the world shut down, which now, thanks to our not-so-impressive DIY skills, is also our part-time camper van. We've spent the last four years exploring all around Victoria, but this week we're headed for the border to explore the south coast of New South Wales. It's giving Jurassic Park like I'm in the Maldives. And soak in all that nature has to offer us along the way. It feels like you're walking along the edge of a cliff face. From beautiful landscapes to epic hikes, hidden water holes, and uncovering a fascinating history with whales. This road trip truly has it all, and to make the most of our time, we hit the road before the sun. It is 5.30 and we are about to get on the road, about to get on the road. We did not get much sleep last night, but we're making the most of it. I like the smell of diesel in the morning. How's the price of diesel? Bad. <laughs> it's real bad. $2.06. We were getting a dollar ninety this week. It's a bad week to go on a road trip. I took these seasick tablets. We got them for the cruise, and I've been wanting to test them out to see if they'll help when we're on road trip. So I took two before we left. But it's like six in the morning now, and they're ginger tablets, and I took them on an empty stomach. So now I feel nauseous anyway. So it kind of just defeated the purpose. So now I just feel sick to my stomach and we've barely even left. All we did was drive up the road to the petrol station and I'm already feeling nauseous. So I don't think I should have taken those ginger tablets on an empty stomach. <laughs> Great start to the trip. Good morning. We've just gotten to the road that leads to Patterson's Lookout. It's a two kilometer road up something that's marked as a track, which makes me very nervous first thing in the morning in a two wheel drive van. While it's raining. While it's raining and it's wet and muddy. I don't like it. Should we venture in and see? I don't know, two K is a long way. It's one of those roads where like, once you commit to it, you commit to it, you know? All right, mate, this episode might seem a little bit different and we're just gonna pause the video here so I can talk to you. We have been getting pretty damn frustrated. I hope you guys appreciate how much effort that we put into these videos. You might have noticed some of the audio issues that have been happening lately. Ever since we filmed this, we have gone and bought a brand new microphone with a brand new AUX cord just to go and check it. But while this was happening, when we went back to check all of our footage, with every little shot that we took to film this series, so many chunks are just deleted for some reason. You guys have to imagine, we film something like 300 or 400 clips per day for every single one of those shots. We set up the shot, we make sure we get close shots, far shots, and when Jamie opened up the files and realized that they were just not there, she, she pretty much called me almost in tears, like she was devastated, and it, it feels so, Defeating as a creator for us, we get one shot to film these series because we don't live out on the road. Like we say, we do this part time. So when we put aside a chunk of time where I take time off work and we go and hit the road, it really is like one shot to film it all and capture it all. All that to say, for some reason, a couple of months later when we sat down and put this episode together, stuff just isn't here. It just isn't here. So. We're gonna try and piece this together. If you do notice that this series is a little bit different from our usual standard of quality that we really like to put out there, that is why. Hopefully, it will not happen again now that we have sorted out our audio issues. 
and we are going to go and get some backup hard drives as well just to be doubly sure that we capture everything. As to where we left off, we set off from home ready to go and explore a new area but the first lookout that we went to was actually a four wheel drive track so we couldn't make our way up and then we came to one of our favourite places of the entire trip which is probably what makes losing all this footage so heartbreaking and luckily we did get to keep some of the footage of it but we loved this place. I don't remember what the car park is called and when you get to this car park there's a toilet block there, there's picnic grounds there, and it also leads on to three different walking tracks. We did one of these walking tracks, and that is called the Den of the Nargon, which is where we are gonna pick you back up. And of course, it's really windy while we're filming this, so please, please bear with us. Be nice to us in the comments and hit the like button. This walk is wild, guys. Down to the den of Nargoon. It feels like you're walking along the edge of a cliff face. It oh, is that's crazy. What you are. <laughs> yeah. Like this is just a huge gorge. Right there, just drops straight off. Straight down. No and railing. No railing, and it's been raining today, and it's just these rocks, these slippery rocks. It is. <laughs> it's, Must be your <laughs> it's dicey man look at guys look at this look, that's straight down this hike was not made for my slippery kmart shoes i'll tell you that for free go on jamie press on i hope the nargoon isn't angry <laughs> doug please be careful i'm okay. freaking oh out oh my god i'm actually freaking out bro oh. can we wait a minute for what for me to catch my, my nerves. Yeah, we can wait. This walk really unfolds the further you go. And the closer you get to the bottom of the valley, the more impressive it becomes. This area of the Mitchell River National Park is rooted in deep history with the indigenous people. Traditionally, men weren't allowed in this space and it was an area for women to unite. Visitors are asked to honor this site by not entering the cave at the end of the riverbed that we are about to explore. I think we have just arrived to the Den of Nargan. And it honestly, it lives up to the name and we haven't even officially got there, but it feels like you're in the middle of a storybook forest. It's so slippery though. I'm using the tripod as a walking stick. Wow. This is insane. It's like George of the Jungle lives here. This is stunning. Like stunning. Like I, I don't even like we're in the we're in the, a valley now and it's just all these trees, vines wrapping around, moss, like bright green moss growing, ferns. It's just so pretty. And we haven't even gotten to the actual spot yet. <laughs> it's it's just it feels magical. Yeah. It feels like we're in a movie set. Like someone's made this place to be fake magic. This is definitely somewhere I would come to get away from the men. <laughs> it's it's serenity. It's wild. It's, wild. it's just, it's, it's so like a mystical storybook. Like the stairs, the rock stairs and the moss growing over them. It's just, it's a vibe. And then look at this tree here. You've got the moss growing down from it like isotopes, like icicle isotopes yeah. growing down off the tree, but they're bright green. Yeah. It's a wild place, guys. You have to come here. Put this on your list. Yeah. The, 100%. The walk is a challenge, but it is worth it. Yeah, it's a bad walk. It's, a it's bad not walk. bad. It's just, it's a challenge. It feels like you're just walking through, like, it doesn't feel like it's like a proper track. Like, you just rock, it's rocks the whole way. Wet rocks all the way down. Well, Which is doable. Hopefully not wet rocks when you come. Yeah, but. but coming in the rain gives it a sort of eerie feeling. Anyway, let's go find the den. This way? Yeah. It's the lady's den. If you do make it all the way down to the walking trail, you will know because you will reach this sign that marks the spot that is about a hundred meters out from the den of the Nargoon. And the reason that it sounds so much like a storybook is because it is pretty much out of an indigenous storybook. It talks about the Nargoon, which is this half human, half rock creature that steals children who come down to visit the rock pool. 
Which is amazing that this story is actually attached to it because that is exactly where my mind went when we started calling it Den of Nargoon. I just started saying Den of the Nargoon. And it is an actual fairy tale. I don't know if the indigenous people had fairy tales. It was an indigenous fairy tale creature. It's pretty bloody cool. Also, the reason that this place feels so unique is because it is very unique. The, the plaque also points out that as far south as we are, it is extremely rare to have rainforest conditions like this. This might be one of the most southerly rainforests on the planet. It's a warm, temperate rainforest. And again, we're down in South Gippsland, Australia, Victoria. You don't get a lot of warm, temperate conditions. So this is extremely unique and it's probably one of the reasons why it feels so magical to be driving through Gippsland region and then walk down into this valley. The sign goes on to say that because of the rock walls that we were walking down to get in here, they actually protect and shelter this valley from the bushfires, from the dry winds, from the cold southerly winds. It pretty much creates this almost greenhouse effect down here at the bottom of the valley, which is what's creating this incredible mossy environment even though we've just come out of a dry summer, it's beautiful. You have to come here. This is incredible. And we have not seen another person. Yeah. It's just us. Yeah. Look at this dog. Yeah. Do you oh, see wow. that? Wow. <laughs> I know, I'm yeah. too focused yeah. on the, too focused on the scenery. Oh my God, <laughs> look at it. <laughs> It's a pool. Den of Nargon, I get it. I'd live I here too. Uh, yeah. See it? No. Looks like a lizard climbing the wall out of the rocks. Oh, okay, yeah. <sighs> wow. What a spot. I can't believe we have this all to ourselves. I know. We get a dip in here. Yeah, I think we're going in. That was incredible. We swam in that. <laughs> That's wild. It's beautiful. Oh my lord. It really feels like such a special spot. Now the hard park, the long walk back. There is a dead bird. We just swam with a dead bird right there. Oh my god, ew. Sanitizer. So we popped into sale to go to Woolies to get a couple of things at the grocery store and then we had to come in and see this aircraft display. So the historic static aircraft display. So yeah. Static. Static. <laughs> static. <laughs> the static one. And there's cows behind the airplane so it's super cute. I'm not here to see the animals. Mate. Honestly though you can just pull over on the side of the road and they just have these planes displayed. They have a bunch of signs with history which we're about to walk through and read. When we saw this place in sale it instantly made me think of one of our subscribers Allegro. <laughs> How you yeah. going mate? And Coming from a family of like massive aircraft enthusiasts, I knew that this is something that we needed to pop in and just check out. And it's a very nice like little walkthrough display, you know, sort of grounds that you could pull up to behind the sail airport or in front of the sail airport, whatever direction you're coming from. But it is just a nice little way of like opening up the area to you. And the signs are very, very informative. Like this beast behind us here was one of the original training aircrafts they used before they moved up to the red ones that you might see flying around Melbourne if you are popping in. No, that's one of the other old ones, but <laughs> it is cool to see. Plus they have one of the old training rifle bunkers down there as well. So pretty cool that it's just completely free sitting here 24 seven. 
they got lights around the plane, so I can't imagine what they would look like at night as well. Yeah. This one's called the, the Mackie A7. The Mackie A7. Say hello to the Mackie A7. Oh, eight. Oh, eight one. <laughs> Retired. <laughs> But having seen that, as you can see, it's getting a little bit dark and we still need to go find somewhere to camp for the night, so... And we're so hungry! Let's go. Let's for go a proper that. meal. Let's find camp. Camp time! I just had a Kit Kat and I have a little bit of an energy rush. <laughs> or sugar rush. What is it called? You know what I mean. <laughs> to camp we go! <laughs> I don't know if there's anywhere to go for a cold plunge tomorrow. I don't know. Pelly says it's right here. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. It's a beachside campfront for free. It's wild. Wind would be bad here though. Yeah. Although things didn't go to plan with the day or the filming, this spot, this sunset, and even looking back at all the beautiful memories we were able to capture, kind of helps wash all the negative feelings away. This campsite is a perfect overnight spot with facilities, beautiful views, but you'd want to get in early as spots are limited to I'd say about four vehicles, but if you're passing through, it's definitely one for the overnight list. This place feels truly special at the end of a long day with all the rain we had this morning and we get to just park up near the water. Downside, no fires, but we're making the most of it. It's a great little overnight spot. Good morning. This is the view that we get to wake up to this morning and it is pretty special. You are so close to the water here on such flat ground on this car park. It kind of feels like the van is parked right over the water and it is so still. There isn't any air, but you can see the pelicans landing, the fish jumping up out of the water sometimes. And we've even opened up the fly screen. There isn't a bug in the air. It's the perfect morning. Sorry about the wet shorts. <laughs> Just that's not a skid mark, that's mud. Alright? It's a muddy, it's a muddy lake. Alright? <laughs> Just behave, comments. Behave. We are ready to hit the road for day two! Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I can't believe it. We're on the road. Let us know down there in the comments, the den of the Nargoon. Would you go climbing into a haunted den and then swim around in it? Honestly, we didn't talk too much about it afterwards. No. Do you want to talk about it now? It was so good. <laughs> like, it was such a challenging walk because it was literally like not a formed path. It was just rocks, like mm. boulders mm. that you're like walking over. But I feel like that made it. I feel like that made it feel like an actual journey to this den where there's this beautiful little rock pool. Like it, it was a journey. It yeah. felt like a journey because of that. But 
it is a challenge. It's not somewhere that I would take kids. It's really like you got to watch where you step kind of place. Like take good boots. Yeah, take good. ankle roll territory for sure. Yeah, yeah. It, it, I'm surprised that neither of us rolled our ankle. Mm. Um, but I will say that my white Kmart shoes did not survive the den of Nargut. No, <laughs> neither, neither did the brand new white swimming shorts. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, maybe don't wear white. Um, but it was amazing, and I mean, despite us swimming with a dead bird. It was just so beautiful and tranquil, and it really did feel like s- this special place. Yeah. So, we were upstream of the bird, so... That's irrelevant to me. <laughs> <laughs> Would you swim with a dead bird? Let us know in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> Would you swim with a dead bird in a haunted, ancient den? That's what we did yesterday. <laughs> Let us know in the comments, what did you do yesterday? Because we swam with a dead bird in a magical den of Nargoon. <laughs> This is day two of our week-long road trip as we make our way from Melbourne to New South Wales. The border is about five hours away, but we've decided to break up the trip and do some exploring along the way. That was incredible. We swam in that. Staying at only free campsites as we make our big exit out of Victoria and head to the south coast. So far, we've lost a lot of footage. She pretty much called me almost in tears. Swam with the dead bird. There is a dead bird. We just swam with a dead bird. And took in some beautiful views before getting on the road. And this morning, our first stop is to a historic homestead with donation entry tucked on top of a gorgeous cliffside on the East Gippsland coast. It's 180 hectares of beautiful gardens, picnic areas, bush walking tracks with amazing views. So let's get exploring. Exciting views ahead, I think. <laughs> Whoa, look at the water. I know. It's a long way down. Jeez. God damn, it's <laughs> like shore. Oh my god, the water looks so blue down there. Am I in the Maldives? The Maldives? The Maldives? The Maldives? Maldives? It's so wild, like, you're right near the water, but then you're in this, like, jungle vibe as well. And you come down the stairs from this beautiful homestead, and you're, like, in the jungle. We've been on some cool walks already this trip. We just walked down 95 stairs, and we had to walk all 95 back up. Boo. This jetty is gorgeous. Like, what a nice place to come spend the day fishing, if that's what you're into. As well as, like, the picnic areas up there, so you can barbecue and have bathroom breaks up there. I mean, for the price of a donation, to have this entire jetty here, phenomenal. And it looks like they're very open to boats pulling up and, you know, making themselves at home here because there are welcome signs facing the water's edge. Really cool. The water is so blue, it's giving Jurassic Park like I'm in the Maldives. Although Jurassic Park was not in the Maldives, but this water is so blue today. <laughs> That's all I'm trying to say, okay? Like, it looks like Thailand or something. I've never been to Thailand, but from what I've seen, okay? <laughs> Just know that the water's blue. And the shoreline, the beach surrounding the jetty is covered with oysters. Covered yeah. with them. You can just smell, it smells like seafood around here, okay? Uh, I need some fish and chips in my belly. All right, I think that's what we're going to after this. There's a doll in there. I was not expecting that. I was just coming here to tell you guys that it's a little creepy in here. And then I walked down. Don't make eye contact. Don't make eye contact. <laughs> oh my god. Whose idea was that? I feel like I just walked into someone's bedroom and then I saw that. 
I'm out of here. Secondhand books. <laughs> hey, you on? <laughs> it is creepy in here. Did you see how ready I was? <laughs> distance, straight away, distance, and then aim. In the homestead itself, there's a library in there, which is really cool because this place does have that like fantasy getaway aspect to it. So being able to come here for a day, just grab one off the shelf, find a nice quiet corner anywhere on these massive grounds and really get into it. Bring some snacks. Yeah, we, we've spent a lot longer here than we expected to. We thought we'd just pop in and sort of dip our toe into it. There is so much here. You could waste a day here. I'm telling you. You got a bottle of scotch and a charcuterie board? Whoa, I don't think Bro. they promote drinking here. Okay, Bro. all right. Scratch that. I don't think that they promote that kind of atmosphere, okay? It's just like a family friendly. Come read a book, see the views, go. No, 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 don't listen to him. Go for a walk, let the kids play around. It's just a nice, chilled, like, come read picnic vibe, okay? Don't listen to him. Got a little snail slug getting away from you buddy get a swallow it so this is a dolphin point lookout it is a lookout setup and I didn't expect it to be such a nice lookout it's a proper tower setup and the barbecue area brand new toilet block brand new car park brand new the only thing is it wouldn't be very good for big rigs or people towing caravans but down the start of the driveway there is a big turn off it's just a muddy area but it is a big turn off where you could fit a couple of caravans if you want to come here and they're really inviting you to come stay a while come hang out come explore lake's entrance oh no i'm scared they're like flying in sync yeah we have never seen so many pelicans just flying around like i've always just seen them floating on the water or just like skimming over the water but these ones are so high up circling around this lookout it's, it's so cool. The wingspan is so impressive. We've only just touched the tip of Lake's entrance, but being around here, just driving through here, it makes me feel like I want to do like what we did in the Mornington Peninsula, like a couple of days. Like three days in Lake's Three or four days in Lake's entrance. Renting a sup board or a canoe, going to some of the local places. Yeah. Getting our teeth stuck into this yeah. place. I don't want to pass through Lake's entrance anymore. Yeah. I want to hang. Lake's entrance has been on my list for a long time, so to just be here, I'm really excited and I like had to stop in here on this trip, but it's just not enough time. This tree was the original lookout they would use to see ships coming in, and then, you know, eventually they decided they needed something a little bit more not a tree. <laughs> The big tower that's here, the official lookout, is actually used by the Victorian state government. It's not for tourists to come and see. So Jamie got out of one today. <laughs> I don't have to go up the tower. I, I know, but honestly, I kind of wanted to because the views up there would be incredible. You guys have to see this. Check this out. We are here at Dolphin Lookout, the actual Dolphin Lookout, because <laughs> the other place we were at was Jemmy's Point Lookout, and Doug mixed them up, so. Please round of applause happen, for Doug, round of applause for Doug. These things happen. <laughs> but it is so cool to just get different perspectives of the same area. So we were out at the jetty, and then we went up to Jemmy's Point, and we got to see like a more of an aerial view, and now we're back down, and we're at the water level, and it's just really cool. We're closer to the sandbars now, and we're so close to all the pelicans, and you already know I love that. We're right at the point where the ships come in and out of Lake's entrance, which was kind of cool, because up at Jemmy's Point, we were watching them leave the port. So it's nice to be right here by the exit. I don't know if you can see it, guys, but that is Jemmy's Point right there. That's where we were. Wild. This is such a beautiful spot. There's so many spots to just pull your car up. You don't even have to get out. And so many people are just here having lunch. It's just a really good lookout point. Someone's here and they have their little bulldog. Ooh. Someone's fishing right over the pier. 
It's it really must be a good fishing spot because the pelicans here are in numbers. Yeah. You guys know we love a good lookout, so taking this one in before we get back on the road. We need fishing ships. <laughs> yeah. So many birds. There's so many birds. Come in after me. If I fell in, I would want you to jump in after me. I just asked Doug, what would he do if I fell in? And he's like, oh, I would tell you to go find the ladder. <laughs> what am I doing here? Hello. They're so quick. We just pulled up to the Mars Dinia Rainforest Walk and it was something that I am super excited for. It's a 20 minute walk, one kilometer track. It is about 15 minutes outside of the lake's entrance yeah. town center. It is mainly a paved road, but when you do get to the turn off, <laughs> it's about two kilometers of badly, badly corrugated road. And right as you pull up to the walking trail track, there's a big sign that says four wheel drive only. The van did make it. You have to go really, really, really slow if you come here in a two-wheel drive. Just go very slow and you should be fine. Just avoid, there's a couple of big potholes. So it's not for everyone, but we, we just made our way through very slowly and avoided the potholes. If it's raining, I wouldn't come here at all. Do not come in the rain if you have a two-wheel drive. <laughs> when you do get to the entrance of the Mardinia Rainforest Walk, there is a nice little picnic area set up. It's not a gazebo, it's just a table with a fire pit, but there is a sign here that says no camping. So this is very much just a come and visit for the day area and enjoy what I assume to be pretty good four-wheel drive tracks <laughs> onwards. Unfortunately, <laughs> when we arrived, we found out that the track is actually closed. So we cannot go do the rainforest walk because there is no way to get to it. They've blocked it all off. So we drove all the way down here for nothing. If you come to the Mazdinia Rainforest Walk, what's it like? Put it in the comments, let us know. We're not gonna be seeing it today. Unfortunately. So back on the corrugated roads. I don't know, this might be a quiet day for us and we might chill out at camp. We'll see what else we get up to. <laughs> Remember that episode we did a while back when we were looking for like seven waterfalls and we didn't find any of them? Similar vibe today. Another corrugated road. Hello, puppy. You're smelling me? You're smelling me, but it's my best friend. Oh, hello. Hello. <laughs> hello. <laughs> So we actually got to the next spot. The roads were not closed. It was a four wheel drive path, but it was way easier than the other one. I would still be iffy if it was raining, but we made it here to the Stony Bridge Trestle Bridge. I mean, yeah, the Stony Brook, what was it? Stony Brook Trestle Bridge. The name's down here again. Stony Brook Trestle Bridge. Stony. Don't come in the rain. <laughs> We just learned that this bridge was like a 70 or 90 kilometer extension to the railway 97 track. 97 kilometer. 97 kilometer extension to the railway track, which really, really helped the local economy out here. This bridge was made all the way back in like the World War One era. And up until that point, this was the biggest thing, like the, the biggest constructed monument in Victoria going onto it. And it was super important to this region to help rail in the economy in the area. And it kept up the entire region all the way up until the 1980s, where unfortunately, the whole area was hit with a massive bushfire and this thing's made out of bloody red gum, mate. It's crazy, I thing, can't believe it's still standing. Mm, whole Honestly. thing nearly went up, but. The last year that it was running was the year before Doug was born. And the year after I was born. <laughs> this thing's old AF. Yeah, and it's a miracle it's still standing. <laughs> it's a miracle we're still standing. <laughs> you do want to walk across one. Go to the new G1, we did that one. It's too bad that it's out of use now because it was said to be the most difficult thing to build in Victoria up until the point of construction, which is very believable. I mean, look at the thing. No, Doug! Oh, yeah. that, that's yeah. been there the whole time? That's why I said Stony Creek Bridge. 
so like with so much passion. I was like, it's called the Stony Creek Bridge. Stony Creek Bridge. You'll never guess what this bridge is called, guys. All that time, the name was right there. Stony Creek Bridge. Tony Brook, we said, I don't know. Let's go to camp. We, we're tired, okay. <laughs> One more thing that we were going to do today, but I don't know if we're gonna get up to it because we're just feeling low on energy today, okay? But it's right up the road. It's the Nawa Nawa something walk. And we we're gonna go check that out. So if you do come to this area, there is more than one thing to check out around here. I think I saw a sign for something else further down as well. Um, just be careful. If it is raining, again, two-wheel drives. I just, I wouldn't play with the rain and the two-wheel drives, okay? But the roads were definitely way better than the last one, okay? We always try to see and do as much as we can on these trips, especially we want to give you guys fun videos to watch, of course, but some days you just don't have the energy to do it all. And sometimes you just want an early day at camp to chill and wind down and to have some time off camera to just relax and unwind before doing it all again in the morning. Our mornings are starting at like 6 a.m. before the sun even gets up so that we can get everything ready and then film and then do a campsite tour. So. Yeah, there's a lot behind the scenes that you guys don't see, so bear with us if, we, if we're if we managing our energy levels. It's just a lookout. Maybe we could squeeze in one more lookout. It's not a, I thought it was another walk. It's a I don't lookout, know. it's five minutes away. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. If, if, you, if you guys see us at camp, you know we, we didn't make it. If we're at another thing, then you know we made it. Okay. Well, we're, we're delirious. Well, okay. <laughs> okay, bye. We are burning the calories getting these shots. What are you doing, Doug? Making sure there's no cobwebs for you. <laughs> hey, Baz is here again. There you go, mate. Of Was he? Yeah. Oh. So according to Google, this is the Nawa Nawa Lookout, but that sign just said the Boggy Creek Lookout or something. I don't know if we're in the right spot, but to be honest, the lookout isn't that impressive. I know that we sound really spoiled and we probably are. We've seen a lot of lookouts in Victoria. But it's just kind of hit or miss. Like you, it's not gonna be the end of the world if you miss this one. The views, you could just see a lot of trees. You can barely see the creek. Um, but let's see if the drone can see anything. This is the day of the corrugated road. forest is the rainforest walk and the roads are very similar so will we make it to camp will there be camp spots available or will we have to drive six kilometers back and find somewhere else to stay that's what we're about to find out <laughs> oh it's smoothed out oh my goodness oh it was getting really bumpy it was actually spinning the car tires yeah we were sliding on the um, corrugation it was so bad you know the corrugation's bad when i pull out the camera for it okay <laughs> Fingers crossed it doesn't rain while we're sleeping because we might not get out of here tomorrow. And that's really gonna put a stump into our road trip. Four days at camp, <laughs> waiting for the weather to clear. With no no food. <laughs> we're supposed to restock the fridge tomorrow. Oh man. We've reached the promised land. It feels so good to be on flat ground right now. It was um, six kilometers to the first turn off and then 5.5 kilometers further in. Let's go find a spot before we 
before we uh, give this a raving review. <laughs> Two wheel drive will make it in dry weather. Don't come here in wet weather. Don't do it. I don't even know what, we have no business being here. <laughs> We've made it to camp. We are at Petman's campsite, Petman's beach campsite. Mm -hmm. I can't remember the name. It will be on the screen, okay? <laughs> But the sun is starting to get lower, so we're gonna go explore a little bit and then we're coming to set up camp. We are both so exhausted mentally, physically, emotionally. That journey was so testing. I, I wasn't sure if we were gonna make it down. It is 12 kilometers of just bumpy potholes. If it rains tonight, we might be in trouble. <laughs> And the thing with drives like that is, you know, towards the end of the day when you're looking for a campsite that you've never been down before, down a four-wheel drive track, sort of, that you've never been down before, you just don't know if the road is going to be ruined. So the entire time, you're like, we could have to turn around at any minute and yeah. find somewhere else to sleep tonight. Well, it's not the biggest deal in the world, but it is one of those things like, is this it? Is this the corner that's going to get us? We'll do a full tour at some point. Not right now. We're going to explore. Sounds angry. Oh, that sounds massive. I mean, it'll be a surf beach, right? Because it's coastal. Ooh. Wow. Oh, nice. She's a beauty. <laughs> She's a beauty. <laughs> That's a beach. They have big waves. Wow. This reminds me of the Golden Beach campsites. Yeah. With the windbreak and everything. I mean, it's, a, it's a similar beach, isn't it? 90 mile oh, beach. Oh, yeah. 90 mile beach yeah. is not far it's from connected here. To this country. It's going to be cold in the morning. Uh, it said no life-saving facilities. I don't know if that's a good idea, Grandpa. I'm tired of this, Grandpa. Big ol' ants here. Yep, that's the outhouse. Feel free to make that walk in the middle of the night. All right, time for Jamie's outhouse review. Don't do it. <laughs> it's brown. Yeah, it's it's got eucalyptus leaves in it. And that is why we pack one in the vents. <laughs> I also have road trip snacks in this bag that I keep in the front seat so that we always so that we always have snacks on hand while we're driving. And at the end of the day when we're setting up camp, I, I like to get a couple of our go-to snacks just ready to go in the middle console so that in the morning we just can get on the road after we start filming. These days are long. Like we're putting in 12 hour days filming this guy. So hit the like button. Come on, hit the like button. Okay, I'm so tired. We've had these for years. Jamie got these when we first started dating. Never ever use them. They're tongs, they're barbecue tongs. We've also had them in the van for like the last three series that we've shot. Always intending to use them. Now, now I use that set of tongs to set up the portable fireplace because it gets so greasy. But I think these might finally become the new cooking tongs. Otherwise, why else am I carrying around Darth Vader's lightsaber? <laughs> Good morning. You uh, might remember that when we arrived here last night, we said the one thing that would ruin this place 
and make it super hard to handle the roads is rain. <laughs> it started raining at 11 o'clock last night and it's still raining now at 6.30 in the morning. So we are currently sitting here waiting for it to stop raining. Genuinely am worried about getting out of here. Yeah. Well, there's no reception out here so all I could do was look at my weather forecast that was uploaded from 1 p.m. and it said rain but it it hadn't rained all day so I was like when is the rain coming so I checked and it said 11 p.m. and I was like oh no and then there's rain forecasted for today but I don't know what time because nothing would load on my phone. We're gonna get up get our morning started go check the ocean I'm not going to check the ocean. <laughs> I'm not. Like, so we need to get ready so that when it does stop raining, we can just try and get out of here because we have to take it so slow. Yeah, we've got 12 wet kilometers ahead of us. This could really ruin our plans for today. Cold, wet one this morning. Definitely need a warm drink. One thing that we came to the conclusion of last night is that the wood fire is without a doubt one of the best things to cook on. Those steaks that we had, those lamb steaks that we had cooked over an open flame were actually so soft and delicious, but boiling water over an open flame takes way too long. So the gas cooker, even though it sucks and it burns all the food, if you want to put a kettle on nice and quick, you go with the gas cooker every time. Right, campsite review time now that the rain has gone down to a fine misty drizzle. This spot, I love it. It is weird for me to say that because usually you know that I love somewhere where you can actually see the water or hear a river or have a bit of a view and it does look very grassy, doesn't it? But what I like about it is that it's so secluded. It is 12 kilometers down a corrugated road. Let's talk about that for a moment. Can a two-wheel drive do it? Yes. Can they do it in the rain? I'm gonna tell you once we get out of here. But a two-wheel drive can do it. If you have anything above a two-wheel drive, and I mean like an SUV, it will thrive in that. It is a very tough road. So I think it's going to be okay in the wet before the four-wheel drive start to churn it up, but we'll see. <clears throat> what I love about this site so much is that the spots are sort of bollarded off in sections. So they all feel very secluded. I think you could get maybe 10 caravans in here and then this place would max out. But each one of the spots could fit two, three tents each, depending on the size of the tent. Each spot has got a designated fire pit area, which is wonderful. There is one toilet. It is a drop toilet. It was built long ago and then left to decay. Do with that information what you will. What I like about this spot so much is the secluded sectioned off locations. And because you can't see the water, you can still hear the water constantly. You are about 150 meters, 200 meters from the waterline. This wall of grass behind me is just a giant sand dune covered in scrub and there is a walkway that goes right to it and then it is just open ocean as far as the eye could see. So if you had a couple of toys that you wanted to come down here with, I mean dirt bikes, there's four wheel drive tracks, I mean jet skis, I mean canoes, skis, surfboards, there's the water right there. This place is a secluded little quiet playground just tucked away and hidden in a national park and I absolutely love this spot. Hey, so the rain has stopped and the blue skies are out. So as far as the weather for the day, it's turning around. We still have to get out of this place. We've packed up. We've been taking it easy and like kicking back at camp this morning, waiting for the rain to pass. This is our shot to try and get out of here. Sun's out, 12 kilometers of muddy road, but not fresh wet road. And we haven't seen another car. One other camper has left. So these tracks, they might be soaked, but I think they're gonna be doable. Let us know down in the comments, have you ever gone to try out a new camp spot and then be absolutely blasted by the weather and not gotten to see it at all? Because we've had some campers roll up here and to them, this entire campsite has just been the inside of their tent, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, and they got water in their tent. 
And they forgot firewood, so we gave them some of ours. But. So let us know in the comments your wettest campsite tale. <laughs> Put it down there for us. They're bailing because of the weather. Mm. If you've been watching from the start, let us know what your favorite part of the series has been so far. We hit the road for the week to head to the south coast of New South Wales. Today is day three and we are still a good two hours from the border, but because we're taking it slow and exploring some places and free camps along the way, we still have a whole other night ahead of us before we even leave the state of Victoria. We've hiked. You have to come here. This is incredible. Went swimming. Woo! Taken in all the waterfront views. Am I in the Maldives? The Maldives? Oh. Wow. And if I'm being honest, we've been pretty lucky with the conditions of the roads with our two-wheel drive van. But yesterday, we were eager to stay at this beachside campground and made our way down 12 kilometers of some pretty grueling dirt roads. This is the day of the corrugated roads. It was a push, and I'm pretty sure the only reason we made it through successfully was because the roads were so dry. But last night, the weather hit us with a bit of a surprise, and this morning we're left to pick up the pieces and hope that this doesn't put a pause on our trip. All right, it's time for us to try and make our way out of this campsite. If you were tuning in from last week, you know that we took our two-wheel drive van down a 12 kilometers of corrugated road, and it rained all night. So that is going to make for a very interesting morning. We have waited for the rain to pass. The sun is peeking through the clouds. So we're excited to get this day started. But first, we have to get out of this campsite. Let's go. No. So far, so good. Yeah, so far, so good. I'm nervous. We'll be right. But, you know, 12 kilometers is a long way. Ah! <laughs> All right, we have officially made it out of the campsite grounds. It was actually better than driving in yesterday, and it's so wild. We'd think that the rain helped smooth out the ground. I don't know if that's even a thing. Leave it in the comments. Do you know, does rain help smooth corrugation out? I don't know. I think we also got really lucky that there were no four wheel drives entering. We left early enough that no one had really touched the roads. I think if a bunch of four wheel drives were going down those roads, they would have really dug up some of those potholes. So I think it was a matter of luck, but it was actually easier and way more smoother. So can you get to that campsite in the rain in a two wheel drive? Yes. Maybe. I don't know. We risked it and it worked out for us. I don't want to send anyone down there who gets stuck. Take it at user discretion. You get to really feel it out like we did. Our two-wheel drive did it, so I'm really proud of you, Stan. Well done, buddy. All right, we are out of the campsite and it's officially time to start this day. It's so cute. It's so cute. Oh my God, I love it. Have you ever heard of creamed honey? Look at someone wrote on the mail. <laughs> this is so cool. Oh, hey, brother. The rain is back, but we just pulled off on the side of the road like 10 minutes up the road from the campsite is this little honey shop and it is so cute i had to stop it's so cute they've done so well just setting it up it just has all local honey products there's like candle beeswax there's like actual honeycombs they have jams in there they have just little honey sticks and so we went in where's my honey <laughs> That's right. Oh. little is right it the whole thing is about a meter by two meters, like yeah. square meterage. It is a shed, but it's a full little shed. Yeah, they've really done really well. And so you walk in, it's an honor system. There's a little donation box. They even have some coins if you need change to like break a five or a 10 or something or 20 or 50 or 100. Like you could spend so much money in there just getting all sorts of... Like there's a lot in there. Yeah. It's really cool. It's so cute. So if you are someone that loves to just like support local small businesses and you want to just pop off on the side of the road and you know they have like fruit stands sometimes or all those
those kind of little things. I love those kind of little things. This reminds me of when we did the Great Alpine Road and we stopped off at that little pumpkin farm and those pumpkin seeds were literally some of the best I've ever had in my life. No, they were the best pumpkin seeds I've ever had in my life. And I just love the local taste, okay? You just can't beat it. So if you are in the area and you have not checked out Wombat Honey, yeah, we yeah. met one of the owners. He was so nice, so helpful. We didn't have any cash on us, so he actually let us transfer. Um, obviously, the cash is the main way to do things, so if you do come by, bring some cash so you can pick up some local honey produce. Don't take anything. There is a wall of shame in there, and I love it. He just yeah. blasts out anyone who takes anything. It's hilarious. I, just, I can't believe someone would go in there and do that. Right. I just can't, I can't imagine. It's such a dog move. Oh. It's such a dog move. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna people watch here a little bit. I'm gonna have a little gossip session. It's probably people that are like, oh, I'm so connected. I got, I got organic honey. I got organic and locally produced honey, you know, like brag about it, but you didn't even pay for it. You stole it, mate. <laughs> it's such a dog move, bro. Who steals fresh produce? From like a family. That's so messed up. <laughs> Go it's, to Woolies for that, it's okay? <laughs> six bucks and you stole it. What is wrong with you? I cannot wait to try this out. Back on the road. Today we are exploring the surrounding suburbs of a river that was made famous by an Australian poem back in 1890. And if all goes to plan, tonight we will be sleeping under the stars on the banks of the iconic Snowy River. The sun was out, we made it out of our campsite, and got to support the cutest small business. Vibes were high, and the day was definitely looking up. Alright, we have made it to Lovelock Lookout, and just the sun coming out has honestly shifted my mood, <laughs> because I was in a little grumpy pants this morning, okay? But the sun's out, we just pulled off into this little parking area, it, there's not a lot of parking. Eight cars? One, two, three, four, five, six. I don't know, all right? I'm not gonna sit here counting the spots, but depends on the size of them, okay? Anyway, there's lots of beautiful trees here. The sun's coming through. I believe it's just a lookout, but it looks like there's a little walking trail to it. So it's good to stretch our legs and get moving for the day. So I'm excited. But I will say that the temperature is not as warm as yesterday. It's feeling like autumn today. It's feeling like autumn. <laughs> I didn't bring enough warm clothes. <laughs> The walk so far is nice and easy, it's got a nice set of stairs going down it, and it does have serious rainforest vibes. I know that we're walking towards the coastline, but this very much feels like we're walking through a rainforest. It's all ferns on the side and bushes on the other side. Very, very rainforesty, not coastal at all. It's really cool. I didn't expect it. I thought we would just walk straight and the lookout would be right there, but this is cool. Look at this. This is a rainforest. Yeah. Oh. Fine rainforest, a protected pocket. Again, this is giving those same vibes at the Den of Nargun. Like, it's like a protected little rainforest. It's out of nowhere. Who knew that Gibbsland area had so many like rainforest vibes? Yeah, this small. The reason it feels like a small rainforest is because it is. Apparently, these tiny vine rainforests occur along the east coast of Australia's coastline. News to me, very enchanting though. Enchanted Garden! Apparently that, that picture over here says it's a long-nosed bandicoot. But I don't know, if you were a 90s kid and you played Crash Bandicoot growing up, that's not what the cartoon looks like. That looks like a mouse. I thought Crash Bandicoot looks like more like a dog cat creature. Cat dog. Crash Bandicoot looks like a dingo. Cat dog. Alone in the world, a little cat dog. This is a long-nosed bandicoot, apparently. The lonely night digger it says this rather charming small marsupial is a loner at heart and is well known for the round con conical holes it digs in search of insects and other small invertebrates. Small invertebrate in in and other small invertebrates. It's a nocturnal animal sleeping during the day and emerging at night. When active, it snuffles and sniffs about using its sense of smell to find food. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, the long-nosed bandicoot. Continue the walk. I just thought he liked apples. No, he eats insects. Oh. He eats the bugs. 
Hey, we hey, should get one of those for inside the van. Oh, yeah. Then we, <laughs> we won't get any bugs. Yeah. Oh, this isn't a lookout. This is the beach. I know. What the heck? Where's the lookout? I mean, I'm loving that we're at the beach, but... Where is it? Do we still go on that there track? No lookout here. According to, mate, Google doesn't know where anything is anymore. <laughs> Dude, we're on the beach. That sign did not say, love lookout. Love lock lookout. We're on the actual beach right now. <laughs> What is happening? Whoa. Check this out. I just noticed this as we came onto the beach. Wild. Whoa. It is a full on Squid. We're gonna see if the lookout is down this path. If not, we don't know where it is. One thing really nice about this walk is they've put down this like rubber matting which makes it super accessible rather than just clomping up and down on sand. Almost feels like a wheelchair might be able to do this, but it is rocky in some patches as well. Just a nice rubber walking mat resting on top of all the sand. We tried to find this lookout, but the weather's turned on us again. We're gonna have to make a mad dash back to the car before the camera gets soaked. We'll see you back at the van. Ah. Oh my goodness. Oh, we made it. Oh, that rain just really came out of nowhere. Now that we got back and read the sign, it's like a 40 minute walk. <laughs> we got like 20 minutes in and had to turn around. But I think it's going to the spot we're going to next anyway. We still have not found the Love Lock Lookout, but it's still a really awesome coastal walk. Yeah, look, you can look in for Love Lock. Don't go to where Google tells you to go. I don't know. But if you do want a really nice coastal walk, like Jamie was just saying, this is one of the best ones we've walked across. Purely because it takes you along the sand on those nice rubber tracks that we all saw, but then it goes through this little like wetland area that has the coastline splashing up against the side of it. It was so unique. Yeah, it was, it was awesome. a lovely walk. And then as the rain started coming down and you're going back through the rainforest vibes, it felt like you were like really in some cool rainforest vibes. I was looking for the bandicoot, but we didn't find him. Not the walk we were looking for, but the walk we needed. Yes. I'm awake now. A few moments later. Like maybe 500 meters up the road from the car park, there is a tiny little sign that says lookout. And I mean tiny. So from the car park that Google takes you to, you can go on this walking trail which goes all the way back to the car park. Do be aware, there is no signage on the walking trail that says look out. We showed you the sign and it just talks about that rainforest walk to the left hand side facing the car park. But if you go on the right and actually follow the road around, you'll see this little dirt path and apparently this will take us to the lookout. We'll see. Could you look at that? The rain stopped. <laughs> That is beautiful. <laughs> Worth it? Worth what? We didn't do anything. We pulled over. <laughs> That's so cool. It's like Great Ocean Road vibes. Yeah. So way down there is where we found the squid. But the Snowy River starts all the way up at Mount Kosciuszko and winds its way down the Victorian high country to end up, and if you're lucky, you might actually see a snow-bellied eagle as well. 
white-bellied eagle. And if you're lucky, you might actually see a white-bellied eagle from this spot as well. One of my favorite road trip snacks right now is seaweed. Seaweed. I've become obsessed with snacking on seaweed. Like I used to think, I used to see people snacking on seaweed and think that's so gross. I'm a seaweed girly now, okay? So don't knock it till you try it. Let me know in the comments, do you like seaweed? He's not, he eats it when we make sushi bowls for dinner, but other than that, like he won't eat it on its own. I, tr I keep trying to get him to have some and he's like, oh, this is like, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, he loves salt and so, it's such a good salty snack. Anyway, let me know. Are you a seaweed kind of person or uh, no? Just in sushi or what? You love sushi. I know, but eating it like it's a packet of chips. <laughs> just pulled up to Samson's Lookout, there's so many nice walking trails along the coastline of Marlow, and the reason that we stopped at this one is because it actually has some public bins, which we are always on the lookout for. Nice. Thanks, Marlow. So the next spot on our list <laughs> has taken us to another bumpy, corrugated road that I think is a four-wheel drive track. Is it? It's got the yellow signage that says track. It's a, marked as a track on the road. It's five kilometers. I kind of really want to see it. It's been raining today. It says nine minute drive. So right now we're sitting at the entrance debating because the entrance alone is a hill. <laughs> no reception, no reviews. Do we just try and see what we can do? Let's poke our nose in. Oh. Nerve wrecking. You guys, we are pushing this van to its limit on this trip, okay? I don't know how I feel about it. Stan, oh, it, we're going up a big hill. Shit, 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 shit. I don't like this. Yeah. I don't like this. We're pull, we're pull He's the pulling the pin. Oh my god. Hold on. Let me get out. He's freaking out. No, I'm not freaking out. I just know the situation I'm in and it sucks. <laughs> we tried. We gave it a red hot crack, guys. The tires it. Yeah. You're good. Oh man. The wheels just slid. There's so much mud on the van wheels. Looks like we're not gonna make it to Young Creek Falls today, but if you do have a four-wheel drive, go check it out. It looks amazing in the photos. Um, I would not recommend this one for two-wheel drives. Back on the road. We have been on quite an adventure since we decided not to go down the four-wheel drive track. We're here at the Snowy River viewing platform in Orst. We thought we'd come down to Orst to grab a drink, have some lunch, check out some of the local artwork. The local artwork. There's a lyrebird statue. It's not there anymore. It, doesn't, it only exists on Google. A lot of things only exist on Google these days, apparently. This one wasn't user error. We decided to go back and read some of the reviews on a little bit more detail. And if you sort by newest, you'll notice that it says no longer there. And it is indeed no longer there. It's just a patch of earth now. Second thing on the list was to, you know what? Let's reset, let's grab a drink, search the area. There's a lovely brewery, the Sailor's Head Brewery. What's it called? The Sailor's Grave Brewing. Sailor's Grave Brewing, beautiful. It's closed today. Yeah, it's only open on the weekends. It looks like a really cool vibe, so if you are passing through on the weekends, 
then check it out. I'm so cold. My jumper is soaked from the rain, and now it's just bringing in all the chills. So don't mind me over here trying to stay warm, okay? One thing they can't close down is the bloody snowy river, mate. So we came here to the snowy river viewing platform in Orbs, and funnily enough, they nearly did close down the bloody river. The reason this viewing platform is here is because you are looking at how they have regrown all the vegetation around the area because of the decades of destruction the snowy river faced. Number one is all the farming throughout the area that pulled back the vegetation so that the farm animals can get to it but that stopped all of the the natural ecosystem that is required for the snowy river. It's so wild to me like they de-snagged the river and they put the farmland right up to the clothesline and cleared it all out thinking it would you know provide better river flow it almost fully stopped the flow of the river and like killed off all this fish taking out all the trees that provided a habitat for the fish inside so i i'm just so like shocked about the fact that like making such subtle changes that we as humans thought created such a massive effect on this river and the wildlife living here. The second thing that nearly destroyed the river was a hydroelectro scheme that they tried to bring into the 1960s upstream. This brought down the river flow so much that it was described as just a trickle of a stream and they have been slowly trying to reinvigorate the river's flow ever since then which they have succeeded in doing but according to all the information around us there's still a bit of regrowth that needs to happen. Yeah. So it could have been no waterfall for us today, no pub for us today, no statues for us today and if humankind had had their way, there would have been no bloody snowy river here either today. Yeah, and we wouldn't have nowhere to sleep tonight because we're camping on the snowy river. <laughs> All right, let's go find something to eat. Although the Sailor's Grave Brewing was not open, there is a dump point right next to it, which is a very interesting spot to put a dump point, but I am very grateful because we hate searching around for dump points everywhere and we really need one today. <laughs> oh, we nearly missed launch, actually. Did? Yeah, we missed launch. Yeah. We missed launch. <laughs> Let's go to the food boy. Let's. Do you want to see if they have anything? What are they gonna have? The bowl of chips. Hey, yo, man. We missed lunch. A kitchen and check for you, okay? Oh, you're good. We'll check with that. Just check there. And if not, come back here quick, and I'll run straight to the kitchen. Cheers, buddy. Cheers, buddy. Thank you. He's getting annoyed. I'm going back to camp after this and just sitting and looking at the river for the rest of the day. I'm done. <laughs> That's four in a row. That's enough. <laughs> Tell the kitchen we said thanks. <laughs> yeah, thank you guys so much. Lunch was delicious, but now we gotta stock up on some essentials. The essentials. This is his post Parma dance. He's so annoyed that I wanted to show you guys the nightgown he can't eat. I'm not annoyed. <laughs> I'm not annoyed. You need to see it. Ned Kelly. This country loves Ned Kelly. This state is obsessed with a murder. And we found our home for tonight. Raise that sun. <laughs> Welcome to the Snowy River campsite. Care. Not a campsite. Camp overnight. Rest stop. Rest stop. The Snowy Over River 48 hour rest stop. That. Welcome to that. That's yes. where we're sleeping tonight. And check out these views. We're gonna set up and chill out for the night because the sun is about to set in the next hour and we wanna soak in having this place to ourselves. And we picked up a little treat from the grocery store that I cannot wait to try later. Let's go. <laughs> and I know we said we were here by ourselves but we actually found ourselves a little friend down by the dock. Hello.
All right, we are settled into camp and I know that the brewery was closed and the afternoon kind of put a damper with things going wrong back to back to back. But we thought we'd redeem ourselves by picking up some Sailor's Graves Brewery beers at the grocery store. <laughs> Just because it was closed doesn't mean we're not gonna try out some local beers. So let's dig in. We got a Drowned Man IPA and a, a Seabird Coastal Hazy Pale. Let's crack into these. Have you got the Drowned Man? I got the Drowned Man. Oh. You need to say to the camera, what's dead may never die. No thank you. You need a, it's a Game of Thrones reference. That's good for them. You gotta give them the Game of Thrones reference. What's, Game of Thrones. What's dead may never die. Game of Thrones. Cheers. <laughs> Sailor's Grave Brewing. The Here hazy we go. IPA. This spot is so cool. Go on. <laughs> While the cars do keep passing, I mean, that's what you're gonna get with one of these pullover. It's essentially a rest stop where you just pull over on the side of the road, but it is one of the nicest ones I've seen. There's no facilities, obviously, but look at these views. The views alone. Awesome little pullover spot. The cranes keep flying over us. It's awesome. I love that it's a 48 hour rest stop. Obviously the cars can be an issue. You're going to get that with a rest stop. Jamie's 100% right. Usually a rest stop is just a bit of gravel on the side of a highway, and that is it. The fact that you've got this flowing river here, and if you are fully self-contained, which you need to be to stay at this sort of rest stop, this is a wonderful spot to spend two days. Bring noise-canceling headphones, though, if you are a light sleeper. Anyway. <laughs> Cheers. 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 This is delicious. How's yours? Slightly fruity. Really? So just a hint of sweetness. It's really nice. Yeah. It's like a regular pale ale beer, but then it's got a little... It's, that would be amazing in summer. Yeah, this is their summer beer. And it's got a little... That's a, I love a hazy pale ale yeah. in the summer. That one's a very bees beer. That was a surprisingly good night's sleep. I don't know if it's because we sleep next to a train line, so we're sort of used to noises, or that this road might just die down during the night. It's only just started to pick up with traffic. It's about 6 a.m. now. But that was a great night's sleep. And then when we open up the side window of the van, all we can see is this view here and the stars last night. That was a good one. Anyway. It's time to pack up camp and start another day. So this was it. This was the Snowy River 48 hour rest stop. I really enjoyed this thing. Now, as a campsite, it's not a campsite, it is a rest stop. So there are absolutely no facilities here. There's no water, there's no drop toilet. There's not even any bins to have a fireplace here. It is literally just a pull up on the side of the road. And as long as you are fully self-contained, you can stay here for 48 hours. That means there is no tenting here. But if you are on a long drive, if you are enjoying the Southern coast from Victoria to New South Wales or the other way around, this is a amazing place to have a good night's sleep. The view there is incredible, watching the snowy river go past you. The river is alive. There was iguanas, there was fish, there was birds going by. The ground here is nice and flat. It's been raining for two days and the van handled it no problem. It's right off the main road. Obviously, the biggest drawback is that main road. If you are a sensitive sleeper, then bring in you know sleeping headphones, sleeping plugs. Um, but it, it really wasn't too bad. I don't think it's a main highway here. So hang on, a car. That's the biggest problem. 
I don't think we're on a main highway here, so it has just been standard farm cars going past, no big B-double trucks. So if you are a bit of a sensitive sleeper, do consider bringing some earplugs or some noise cancelling headphones, but that's about it. There's not a lot to say about the Snowy River 48 hour campsite because it's not really a campsite, it's a bit of a rest stop, but it's a nice rest stop. All right, it's time to get on the road and leave the snowy river. Honestly, I didn't expect to want to do another night here. Neither did I, I really <laughs> enjoy this place. I really, that's what I was saying when I was doing the review. I surprisingly really enjoy this place. All right, let's just do this. There's a helicopter. It is what it is, you guys. We got to get on the road, okay? We can't be standing here all day filming on the side of the road. With all the rain and things not going to plan yesterday, we didn't manage to squeeze in a cold plunge. So we're going to try and squeeze one in today. So stick around if you want to see that. Would you be able to sleep on the side of a road with all this noise and traffic going by? Let us know down there in the comments. Keeping in mind, we didn't really hear much of it, but it is there. All right, we are ready to hit the road for another full day of adventures. Thank you so much for watching. Consider subscribing. Leave us a comment below and let us know what your favorite part of the video was. If you missed the last few videos of our South Coast series, let's just say like any good road trip, it's been a roller coaster of emotions. It is a bad week to go on a road trip. You have to come here. I feel like I just walked into someone's bedroom. That is why we pack one in the van. It's the day of the corrugated roads. You gotta give them the Game of Thrones reference. Game of Thrones, twos. <laughs> that rain just really came out of nowhere. We have been making our way to the New South Wales border over the last few days, and yesterday, while nothing went to plan, we still managed to explore some beautiful coastal walks, lucked out on a country pub meal, and ended the day roasting marshmallows on the banks of the iconic Snowy River. Tomorrow we finally cross the border, but today we've got a full to-do list of chasing waterfalls, exploring more of this beautiful coastline, a very unsettling cold dip, Oh, what was that? Okay. Don't, hold my hand, hold him. I'm so scared. And another lesson in what not to do while travel vlogging. Here we go. Good morning from the chilly banks of the snowy river. Woo! It is chilly out this morning. If I've learned anything on this road trip, I've learned that I am not ready for winter. Well, I am also not doing cold plunge in that river, so uh, we're gonna see if we can find somewhere else. The thing is, I don't like that there's not good access to jump in and jump out, so I need like a nice, easy access if I'm going to do a cold dip, okay? So hopefully we find something, hopefully. But this spot is so sneaky, I did not expect to enjoy it as much as I have because it's just like a pullover rest stop. It's won me over, it's won me over for sure. We are about to head off from the Snowy River campsite and we really enjoyed this spot. If you wanna see more of it, tune into last week's video. Why are you drinking at the same time as me? I don't know, I felt like some <laughs> coffee to be honest. If you tuned in last week, you know that none of it went to plan and it was just a day of things just like going wrong, not being opened. The van wasn't able to get up the four wheel drive track uh, which is like fair enough. <laughs> An entire statue had been removed from a town. Yeah, we just had some bad bounces yesterday So we're excited to see what today has to offer. I will say it's a lot colder than yesterday. I am cold uh, Winter is coming, but that does make for an exciting cold plunge if we can find a spot. Yeah, we didn't do one last week Sorry. or yesterday. For Maybe us. we'll do one today. Yeah, we should do one today. We're doing one today. There's one spot on the list today that I think might be good for a cold plunge, okay. but it might be another we can't get down the road. Oh, right, okay. We'll see. We'll see what we'll the day see what brings us. We're going to try and do one So today. we're feeling a little bit hopeful for today, minus the colder weather. I can't feel my hands right now. Mm. Um, so yeah, off to the first spot. Today feels like deja vu all over again. We just arrived at the road for the first lookout for today and it's looking like the road we were on yesterday. It's called the Mount Raymond Fire Tower, but unlike yesterday, that was five kilometers of windy, uphill, wet, muddy road. This is only two kilometers and it's not as muddy as it was yesterday, so. It does go up though. It is high and windy. Listen, we're gonna do what we did yesterday and we're gonna give it a go. If we have to bail, we bail. If you've been around here, you know we, we push this van a little bit. A little bit. Not too much, but a little bit. Oh, I think it's the first thing in the morning, so we're feeling great. Like, we're not burnt out from the day yet. Yeah, let's go.
Also, I don't know if we've mentioned this, but we're driving with a spare tire on our van. We are away for the weekend and it's fun being able to go away for like a social camping trip because usually we're in creator mode. So we are returning back to one of the campsites we came to on our Great Alpine Road series if you check that out. But we've been here for five minutes and this has happened. Yeah, a flat tire. Hey. Would you do this when you first got to camp or when you leave camp? So just to fill you in, we have a spare tire on and we kind of just left it on because it was in better condition than the other one. Give us a super like. <laughs> Two-wheel drive. This one's good. Two today. Drive. It's good today, all right? If your car gets stuck when you come here, don't come for me, okay? You gotta test it for yourself. But I feel like you should be able to know based on like the entrance of the road and the weather, yeah. whether or not you want to risk it. But, cause right now it's getting real narrow. It's getting real narrow. I don't like this. Also, know your car's turning circle. You know, like I can pick a spot for the van that's just big enough to make Oh God, oh God, what do we do? Oh my God, I'm freaking out. The road just got so narrow and then a car's coming. Thank you. Oh, that was my worst nightmare! Oh my god, that scared me so much. I'm like, we're dead. <laughs> oh, it's getting rocky. Oh my god. He's probably like, why are you bringing this van here? Yeah. Oh god, it's all rocks. Oh, it's just, we're on the side of a mountain That's edge. A big rock. <laughs> There's big rocks. We're on the side of a mountain. It's a straight down drop. We're in a van. Why are we doing Please this? Please don't grab all vertical. Please do not grab all vertical. Please do not grab all vertical. <sighs> This is actually a record. Please do not grow. Why do we do this? Why do we do this? For the content, baby girl! For the songs! Oh my god. Just... Alright, we can park here. We can park yeah. here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just... <laughs> Ooh! Did I mention... Just slow down. You're getting so close to the edge. No, we can go up there. Let me go. Let me walk. I'd rather just stay here. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest. Let's just keep the van here. Okay. Then other people can go up there with four-wheel drives. And we can stay here. Yeah. There's a little like pull off. You don't have to go up though. You don't have to do we'll all that. You. We'll you don't have to do all that. Okay. You don't have to do all that. Okay. These views, they better be good. Okay. <laughs> the fact that we still haven't bought four wheel drive tracks to put underneath the van for in case we get bogged. We're idiots. Okay. We're so Let's go check out this lookout. Take two because it is so cold up here. I don't think you can walk up this one. This Fine doesn't out. feel like a tourist spot. <laughs> no. This is deep out. Yeah, it does. There's music coming from it. Is that <laughs> so, um, the tower is closed. It's not like a fire tower that we've been to before where you can go up. But the view, worth nearly crashing the van for. No, it's not. Yeah, it is. <laughs> It is beautiful, but I feel like there are other lookouts out here that are way easier to get to for a tour while drive. I mean, if you're really looking for some lookout views and you were desperate for them in a two-wheel drive, come here, but... I rate this one. I reckon it's good. Don't come in the rain, but if it's dry, come here. Don't do it. I had to get out of the car. I was like, he backs up so close to the edge. I'm like, we're gonna go off the mountainside. So I was like, I'm getting out, I'll, I'll direct you. What? <laughs> you were going off the edge. <laughs> you go so close to the edge, dude. I can see the No, man. I can't though. And all look I feel like, you. I can't. We both can look I can't, me. I can't. I don't like heights, okay? Oh, that was, we're not high? Okay, then jump. No. <laughs> oh, I, I jumped out of the van so quick. I was like, I can't do this. <laughs> I can't 
Reverse, I can't see my. There's a camera inside the van. You can see how much mountain is left. No, I. All I felt was like he was reversing us off of the cliff, and I was like, my survival instincts that kicked in, and I jumped out of the van. Let's go to the next spot. <laughs> Amy literally thought we were about to roll off the edge of the mountain, and she just bailed. And I was like, hang on. So if you think we're going down, we're not going down together. You just bail. And then she goes, I was going to tell you to get out, but you didn't. But you didn't. You yeah. just jumped no, out honestly, of the fucking van. Honestly, it was like, if he's dumb enough to think that we're not going down, then that's on him. If he wants to die this way, that's on him. But I'm not. So it's not going down together. Well, I thought you would follow suit. You knew I wasn't going to. Why? Because we were fine. Uh, well, then why are you getting mad? Now the downhill. Oh. Let's just hope no cars are coming up. Mm. Oh, I need a taco. <laughs> like that's the end. D I see that. That's why I jumped out. I just want, I want them to know that's the end. Like it's all downhill. That's all downhill. It's all downhill from here. There we go. We are here at Grandview Lookout, and it's a much better vibe for me. Paved roads the whole way, baby. And there is actually a little bit to see here as well. You can actually get a look at the old historic rail tracks that sort of cut straight across the Snowy River region and all the big sweeping fields that press up against the river. This is a really, really nice little spot. It's a, it's a lookout that just pops up behind some residential houses. Residential houses. Residential, residential houses. Yeah, so you, you're like driving, someone's house is like right there, and then you just drive down a little, and you're at the lookout. And there's some picnic tables, and it's just, it's nice. And then there's a rail trail as well, so if you feel like doing a walk, and then coming to the lookout, have a little nibble nibble, and then on your way, it's great. Let's go see it. Don't catch the drone unless you absolutely have to. The drone, when you try and catch it, it raises because it feels something underneath it. So you've got to like, go for it. And I overshot. Oh God. Come on, let's go take care of that before. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed those drone shots. Please hit the like button for Doug's and his finger. RIP to Doug's fingers. Show us some love in this video, okay? We're out here. We're out here trying to film some, some content. I don't know. There's really so much of your blood on this drone oh, at this yeah. point. <laughs> Tell you what, lucky I'm wearing a red t-shirt today. Don't worry. Nurse Jamie's here, okay? Nurse Jamie's here. Whoa! Soaring over the ocean. I think those are the white-bellied yeah. eagles. We just pulled up to... There's another one. What is that? Yeah, that's them, right? Yeah. Wow. Wow. Oh my oh. god. We've just pulled up to the salmon rocks and there's three white-bellied eagles that just flew over us. Incredible. Look at their wingspan. Let's this see if we can... This place is stunning. Let's see if we can get... Oh, they're just... It's so mesmerizing. There's a lookout around this corner, apparently. The waves are gigantic. Huge. There's seagulls There's playing. There's something in the water that keeps jumping out in the middle as well. It's very active right here, right now. Look at this eagle. I need to show you guys. I wonder if the camera will catch it. Oh my God, he's right above us. Wait. Yeah, there's something in the water, like dolphin or something. Something keeps doing that roll. Right in the center of the bay, in the middle of the rock, it just popped out again.
I want to get a little bit closer, so we're going to go further down together. Come on. This beach is epic. It's actually not as windy when you get down off the cliffside, but oh my God, hearing the waves roll up, hearing the waves roll up against the cliffs here. Woo! What a big beach. And listen to this. That's the water rushing in. I've noticed you've got to go before and after the water rushes in. What an epic spot! Oh my god! The sound of the waves crashing against the rocks behind you when you're right down here on top of them is so loud. I saw a dolphin as clear as day jump out of the water and jump back in. I don't know if Jamie saw him. Oh. It is alive out there. Anyway, back to the van. I have 100% seen fins in the water about three times since we've been here. Once when we rolled up, I was on the rock, the camera was behind us and Jamie was up here. They were very close to the rock. They jumped out once. Without any dolphins being here, the cliffside, the sand dunes, the rock formations, the eagles that are just happily flying yeah. low over the car park, there's a public toilet here, a picnic bench. It's a cracker of a spot. It's wild. Yeah. And I don't know, the wind is making it feel more epic. Like, yeah. you really just feel like you're on top of the world when you're standing on that lookout. It's really cool. Also, as we were pulling into this spot, I was getting all the Great Ocean Road vibes, but it's like the Great Ocean Road without the tourists. We weren't even planning to stop by here today, and I'm so glad that I last minute threw it on the list because it's such a cool little spot, and this epic moody weather is just making it feel awesome, even though it's so cold. I'm freezing. I had to sit in the car while he was down there because uh, I was too cold, too cold. Low iron, uh uh, we ain't doing it. I think the fridge just died. It's plugged into the blue, but it won't turn on. Please tell me this isn't happening. I ain't a fridge mechanic, but I pulled the cable out, blew on it, checked the socket, checked the bluey, checked the socket. It's just, the light inside the fridge isn't turning on, the control panel isn't turning on. We'll try and power it with the van, but we can't keep that on all night. So, looks like all the food inside of it is gonna be gone and it'll just be, ramen <laughs> what a day yeah. we survived the four-wheel drive track but our fridge did not survive what this is the 12 volt outlet for the fridge when I put it into the bluey, the fridge does not work. It is now working perfectly. <laughs> I took this out from our front dash. What is this? What all this is, is a 12 volt plug on one end and two 12 volt out plugs on the other end. So we can have the fridge plugged in and the bluey plugged in at the same time, both charging off the 12 volt battery. So all I did was plug this into the bluey and then plug the fridge straight into it. Essentially just use this as a connector, as an extension cable. And it worked. So I was like, the 12 volt outlet on the Bluey is working with an extension. And then just to demonstrate to you guys, I took this out and put the Bluey in, uh, and put the fridge in, just on its own, without the extension. And it's working fine. Electricity, mate. Something tells me that it's not far off dying though. Something is about to go wrong. So um, we might need to stock up on some dry food just in case we run out of power. We still got a few days to go on this trip. 
It's only what Wednesday, yep. Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Yeah, we get like we still got a few days left. Man, lock, mate. Constantly things get breaking. For so reason. now we have we have the minced meat and sausages that need to get eaten. Yeah. Let's continue exploring because it feels like it's starting to rain again. <laughs> okay, we have just come around the corner from the Salmon Rocks, right? And it opens up to you so much. You pull into this car park and the first thing that you notice is they've actually got this walkway built into the cliffside that suggests to me that you can walk all the way around to Salmon Rocks. This is Cape Conran and it's become like a real wildlife yeah. nature-esque reserve, right? There is no four-wheel driving here. There is camping, but no RVing, no staying in camper vans. It's very like off the grid nature-esque getaway. Yeah. They really are trying to like um, preserve things so that it's like thriving for like diving. It says a diver's paradise. Yeah, diver's paradise. Like five kilometers offshore, there is this 200 hectare patch of coral reef where there's no fishing, there's no taking anything away from it. It's all very like plugged in, leave nature as it is, walk in and come and stay. I think that's why the camping is no RVing or anything yeah. like that. And what's really exciting is that there is a river upstream and you can canoe it as well. Three days on a canoe in a marine wildlife sanctuary. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Leave it down in the comments if you want to see us try that. Uh, it honestly sounds like it's its own little Victorian Great Barrier Reef. Mm. Like just a mini Victorian Barrier Reef. Yeah. So yeah, it looks really cool in the photos. So I'm excited to get along the boardwalk. Even though the wind is here, the rain is here, we got this dodgy bag covering the camera to kind of keep you guys safe. Our van is barely staying electrical. Oh, this day, this week is just going like, started at the den of Nargon and it's just going. Let's pick it up right now with this nature <laughs> walk. Ew. I'm not eating it's that. What, this is what you want. No, I eat roasted. What did you say in yesterday's episode? <laughs> what did you say in last week's episode? Oh, bloody love seaweed, mate. My name's Jamie. I'm all about seaweed. I am, but roasted seaweed. We're wasting three dollars a packet on that <laughs> shit when there's seaweed everywhere. No, I'm a roasted seaweed. I'll roast it for you. I'll take. I'll bag all this up, take it back to camp, and roast it for you, mate. Ew. Yuck. The seaweed smells so bad here. Anyway. We are trying to do this boardwalk walk, as you can see it's over there, but like the entrance to get to the boardwalk, it's like over all these jagged rocks, so. It makes you feel very connected to nature. Yeah. Very connected. Oh, my finger. Now we both hurt our fingers today. All right, let's try and do this. It's really, <laughs> okay. First we have to pass over a pile, a mountain of seaweed, and then jagged rocks, then we can get to the boardwalk. I think the best way to go around is this way. Where it's I don't going. know if there's an easier way to do this, but this is the way we're doing this is the way it. Everyone seems to be going. Ugh. I feel like I'm stepping on like animal corpses. It's so squishy. Uh, look at these rocks we have to walk on. They're like so jagged. Whoa! <laughs> Sailor's Grave Park and Beach, that boardwalk, if you can do it, must do on your drive through this area. An yeah. absolute must do. The start of it, and actually along it, is not the easiest thing in the world because it does start on the beach where the water meets the rocks. It does then descend into the rocks and the rock pools. So it's not the most accessible walk to everybody, but if you can manage it, yeah, whew. It's beautiful views of the water, and it seems like they put some good work into the the boardwalk because it feels like brand new like if you watched our other video where we were down in Mornington we did the Cape Shank boardwalk hello pup G'day. hello <laughs> bye bye all right you guys didn't see any of that <laughs> <laughs> the cutest pup just came to say hello <laughs> um the Cape Shank boardwalk it's so long and beautiful and takes you right down to the rocks in the water 
but it feels so old and yeah this is a much newer version of that so it's beautiful 10 out of 10 come see it Fridge, we're back. Are you working? She's working. She's working. All right. Road trips in action still. Road trip continues. Road trip continues. Man, I'm feeling like some seaweed all of a sudden. You guys know what time it is when we got our swimwear on. It's freezing right now, so we're a bit crazy. I think we found the perfect cold plunge location. That side. <laughs> it's so weird guys look at this drop off look at this drop off everyone this just goes from like tea colored water to deep blackness see through see through and then just disappears into darkness <laughs> like the drop off is so severe and windy cold windy scary wild <laughs> mic test one two mic test one two mic test one two we are back in the car nice and warm we've done so many cold dips in so many places but that was so eerie and creepy yeah there's just something weird about knowing that you're in an area that has a lot of life around it like we've seen dolphins and like we've seen all sorts of stuff today and it just goes you can see it and then black it was just so dark so dark i didn't expect to be so scared at first yeah. and then i was like ooh, like there was so much resistance yeah was i was like one. i don't know if i can do it and uh -huh. then it just dropped off and then the sand sucking you in yeah. i was like all of this combined is not the vibe so strange <laughs> But we did it. Yeah. We, we kind of did it. We got a couple of things left on the list before we had to camp, so let's tick on with the day. All right, we are here at the next location, which is Mackenzie River Rainforest Walk. And I did not know that this week was going to be all about the rainforest vibes. It's felt very rainforest mm. for most of the places we've went. Mm. They haven't tried to be rainforests, but they have been. Yeah. The Den of Nargoon didn't know that was going to be a rainforest. Yeah. Love Lock Lookout didn't know that was going to be yeah. a rainforest. They've had rainforest vibes. Unfortunately, every time we've tried to go to a rainforest, something's been closed. And this one is no different, so... This must be, like, the running theme of the week. You can still do the rainforest walk, but a lot of it is on these suspension bridges that go across the rainforest, and that whole section of the walk is, is closed off. So they're saying you can do the walk on either side of the suspension bridge, you just can't cross the suspension bridges because they are under repair, so... Let's check out what we can. This is wild. It's so overgrown. 
This tree branch is straight up broken. And it is just wedged in the tangle of trees up there. That's all that's holding that in. It's as far as we're going, folks. No access beyond this point. Someone's walked around. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> you can see someone's just stepped around. The river doesn't look like it's flowing very much. It looks very stagnant from yeah. here. Jungle vibes in there. There's like a rope bridge. It looks like it could be a cool walk, but this is the end of the road for us. Off to the next spot. Boom! Welcome to Genoa Falls. So we are going to attempt another waterfall walk. This one is not down a four wheel drive track. From Sailor's Grave Park, the drive here was giving Great Alpine Road. Mm. It was so Great Alpine Road-esque with these like creepy trees sprinkled in and mountain views and the weather today has been so on and off. The blue skies came out, then it was raining, then it was blue skies. And then it was just, foggy? Did yeah, the then, sun came out and it raised all the moisture? Yeah, there was so much fog. Yeah, it was a really cool drive here. Uh, but let's check it out because we're getting to camp because we are exhausted. We haven't seen it yet, but we can already hear it as we get closer to the bottom. You can see trickles of running water through the leaves. The sun is peeking through. Hello. Perfect golden oh, hour go. sunset. Here we go. It? Oh, well. Oh, wow. Hello. I'll go get it. <laughs> yeah. That was a rookie mistake. It sounds awesome. Ooh, look at those rocks. This is so cool. This is so cool. It's like um, the Venus baths at the Grampians. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Ooh. Very similar. But the rocks are way cooler, the rock yeah. formation. Walk right out onto the falls. Wow. You walk out onto the pool. <laughs> it's so cool. Spot. This place is amazing. This is truly awesome. If you are going on this road trip or you are just passing from Eden down into Victoria, make sure you put this place on your bucket list. I can't believe how pretty it is here. I know, it's like the Venus Baths and Grampians, but better. I'm so glad that we ended the day with this one, but I am so sore and hungry. It's time to get to camp. Let's go. Goodbye, Genoa Falls. There were so many um, photographers down here just taking photos, everyone had tripods. So for once, we didn't feel like the weird ones with the tripod and the camera, because all their gear was way bigger than ours. Look at this. The walk in, it's about 10 minutes, but there are a few stairs and it does get a little bit steep, but it's a quick and easy walk if you can manage it. All right, we have seen RV life with a goat before, but now we're seeing RV life with a whole flock of chickens. These people have like five chickens hanging out the back of their RV. It's so cute. Mate, this is homesteading on the road. That's so cute, look at them. I thought I was seeing things. <laughs> Hi guys, I do love you. I've had a long day, I will see you inside. A few moments later. This is on Australian. Hello? <laughs> Where's the beers? <laughs> Ten dollars an hour to hire their tennis court. That's pretty reasonable. This is where we woke up this morning. And this is where we are tonight. So tomorrow we officially cross the border. I don't want it to end. I'm not ready. There's the border. There we are. Made a big dash to the border today. Canoeing a river season two? <laughs> Who wants to come on a canoe trip with us? A group canoe trip? What do you think? Oh, let us know, let us please. know. <laughs> Canoes in the chat. <laughs> No, 
how everyone knows that we haven't put any dollar bills in there. Oh, wait, hang on. Oh, there's crinkle, 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 crinkle. I don't have any cash. We usually have cash. I'm going to walk the pub, mate. It's cash only, mate. Usually we travel with way more cash, but we only had like $3 to give them in coins. And in the honey shop. Yeah, even at the honey shop. We usually have way more. It's weird. Yeah, do you want to say hi to the chicken? Let's go say hi to the chicky chickies. Hello, chicky chickies. Hi. I love the chicky chickies. Oh my god, do you think they love me? No, no, I think I want to do that more. They're so pretty. Yeah, they're nice, Doug is beelining to the s'more sticks. Good morning. We got ro woken up by roosters this morning. So last night we arrived here at Genoa Campground. It's this quiet little campground. It's just so cute. There were a lots of RVs already here when we arrived, um, but it's just been a nice quiet time. I tried to do a fire last night, but it got too windy. So we just cooked up some dinner, had some burrito bowls in the van and really enjoyed ourselves. Today we are going to explore, but we are finally crossing the border over to New South Wales to explore a little bit of the South Coast. I'm really excited to officially cross the border and finally get out of Victoria. So let's see what today has to offer and let's just hope for the best, okay? These, tr these trails and tracks we've been coming across have not been the best for the van, but we're, we're taking a little bit of a risk because we want to see the views. This has been such a unique camping experience. I can't even deal with these chickens, roosters, what are they? But it's time to clean off the condensation of this window. Oh. It's time to clean off the condensation so we can get on the road. It's raining? What the hell? Why is it raining and sunny out right now? Hello chickens, roosters. Hello. Right, we stayed at the Genoa Caravan Park, but it's donation only. It's a public caravan park. I don't want to say a campground because it is strictly no camping here. It is for RVs only. And it is a surprisingly generous RV store. They give you 72 hours here, all by donation. There's a little donation box at the start. There are tennis courts here that you can actually call up and use. There's a basketball court here, playground here. There is also a really nice barbecue area with some awesome wooden benches and um, barbecue tables that they have built for people to go and use. And there is a surprising amount of room. I think because this is the last stop on the border to New South Wales. This one does get rather busy. We were here on a Wednesday night, midweek, no public holiday or anything. There were camper vans constantly rolling in. So I do think that this could be one of the more busy ones, especially during the holiday season. But I can see why. There is lots of nice flat ground. There is plenty of room here. Could probably fit up to 30 or 40 RVs, I think. We have noticed as well that there is a lot of little walking paths through the bush that go down to the river that you might be able to see during the drone shot. So there is a river that runs along here as well. It's a very, very nice caravan park. There's a toilet block as well. Not sure how well upkept they are. There was a lot of cobwebs going into them, but this is for RVs. So they do assume that you've got your own toilet on board and there is no dumping ground here either, but there are plenty close by in the nearby town. Overall, it's a really nice rest stop. There is a bit of noise from the highway. There is a highway not too far away that you can hear and see the trucks go past at night, but nothing that was keeping us awake. Honestly, it was more the roosters in the morning that actually woke you up the most. Let us know down in the comments, if you stayed here, were there roosters here? And did they wake you up first thing in the morning? Hit the sub button to tag along on more adventures and we'll see you in the comments. 
We're Doug and Jamie, and we have spent the last four days making our way through the East Gippsland region of Victoria, exploring hidden water holes, epic lookouts, delicious food, beautiful campsites, and a few bumps in the road. This would be uncrossable. <gasps> what the hell is There's that? What is it doing? Today is the day we finally reach the New South Wales border, explore one of the most stunning national parks I've ever been to. We could do a couple of episodes just in this park. Squeeze in some more cold dip fun. Ooh, honestly, I needed that. All while uncovering a fascinating history with Wales before putting the van to the test on some dirt roads once again. Well, this is an interesting way to wake up. <laughs> After a quiet morning, it was time to say goodbye to our new friends and hit the road to our first location of the day. We have not seen one kangaroo on this whole road trip to the south coast. It is wild, it has been blowing our minds and we just said that last night. So on this very questionable road, we just passed a little wallaby. He was on the side of the road. I didn't get the camera out in time, but he was so cute and needle. But these roads are, don't come here if it's raining, okay? Yeah, this isn't a, you might be able to make it in the wet. This would be uncrossable. <gasps> what the hell the is There's that? What is it doing? What, what is a, it? Is that a road runner? Broken turkey. <laughs> Mentally challenged turkey. Oh, oh there he is. is. <laughs> He's so scared, I feel so bad. We haven't even done this walk yet, and so far we've seen a turkey, a spazzed out turkey, <laughs> and a wallaby. I don't know what's going on here. Uh, 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 <laughs> sorry, as I was saying, do not try this road in the wet in a two-wheel drive. There are some trenches in here that if they fill with mud, there is no going over. Yeah, there, it's pretty bumpy. And then it smooths out, but you have to get through all that madness. Yeah. Uh, as you can see, we've been really testing the van on this trip. All the roads are dirt, bumpy roads, so uh, it's the price you pay when you want to see all the things. I think we got here before the rangers did this morning. It is cold. I think we're the first people on this trail this morning. And apparently, this is gonna be a hard walk. I didn't sign up for this, but I also was the one to put this on the list. Let's see, will we make it to the top? Okay, I really don't wanna ruin the mood here, but I wanna give some real life context to this part of the video. And I know to some people, this will just look like another hike on another YouTube travel vlog. But for me, on a personal level, it represented so much more. And I wanted this to be captured in this video so I could look back on it one day. And hopefully someone else might be able to relate. But behind the scenes of filming for this channel, I've been battling with some health issues, which have impacted my mental health contributed to me losing a lot of my strength like to the point where I was struggling to carry a roasted chicken from the grocery store so when Doug told me at the start of this hike that it was a hard one so many doubts entered my mind but I was determined to give it my best shot I'm learning in life that we will always be thrown obstacles that will test us and I believe that at the end of the day it really is how we choose to show up for ourselves in the face of adversity that shapes who we are. Also, if it starts raining, we are in big trouble and we're going to have to make a mad dash to the van and get down this mountain. These roads are not okay for wet weather for our van. This walk straight away doesn't lull you into like a false sense of security. Pretty much the moment you start walking, it's vertical, it's rocky, it's uh, not one of the nice carved out paths that they do around a lot of these walks in Victoria. It's very, you want to see a peak, you're going on a hike. This ain't a walk, this is a hike. It's been five minutes. <laughs> So according to a lot of the Google reviews, this walk can go from the car park and back to about two hours. So we'll see. 
Obviously, we're going to take a little bit longer because we like to really take our time when we do these things. So we'll see what happens. Oof. It's vertical. When we stopped at the grocery store, the Kit Kats were on special, so I grabbed a couple and I told myself anytime there was a hike that was really hard, I would enjoy a Kit Kat after. This is definitely a Kit Kat hike. We're going all the way up. That's the peak. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> you say anywhere else higher? It can't be. <laughs> How was it? We didn't even talk once that whole second half. My legs are shaking. Let's go see these views. 40 minutes. Not bad. Oh my God. <laughs> we are so high up. Yeah. Oh my God. Are your legs shaking? Yeah. What? Oh, far out. Oh man. Good job, legs. This is actually terrible. I did not know it was going to be like this. This is terrifying. What are we doing? You ready to see this? <sighs> there is another peak way up there and apparently there's a ladder to get up to that so you already know we're not doing that. Not around here partner, not around here. This is how much a cat is supposed to eat. Not around here partner. <laughs> Not right here. The views up here are phenomenal. We are the first ones up here, it looks like, and we have this whole place to ourselves. It feels wild. And I'm just so proud of my legs for getting me up this mountain. I'm so proud of you. This might be the hardest walk or hike that we've done since Jamie got her injury. I mean injury because we haven't been able to lock down what it is, but this might be the most challenging hike that we've done. And from that injury, there was a point where Jamie was struggling to literally walk down the street to the roundabout at the end of the block that we live on. So for her to recover to the point where we could do that hike for 45 minutes, which was pretty much vertical over boulders the entire way, and the ranges haven't been up here, there were trees that had fallen as well. Well done. Yeah, well I'm proud of my body. You should be. Well done. I, I can't believe it. The rest of the day is going to suck. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Hikes are... It's not something I want to do every single week of my life, but I love sprinkling them into my life because it's so rewarding getting to the top and knowing that your body got you there. Like, we were way down there, and now we're at the top of a literal mountain. It's incredible. Yeah. Hell of a view. I mean, it's... it's I'm not a hiker girl, okay? But... I did it, okay? If you can manage it, do this hike. It's fun. It's a good one. Yeah, it's it's challenging, but for us it's been very rewarding. But now it's time to get back on the road. But first we have to get down this mountain. <laughs> back to the van. <laughs> We've crossed the border and before we go explore today, we came to scout the campsites that we might be staying at in New South Wales. And so far so good, except the Newton's campground has a bit of a hill that we're iffy about taking the van down. So right now we're scouting it. The van's in the day use area, but uh, we're gonna walk down and see. I just don't know if the van will be able to get up this hill once we get down it. I think we'll be right. I think we'll make it up the hill. Just have to do a very big run up. I'm not so sure about this one. 
Let's put it like this. The spots are too pretty to not risk it. Big run up from here. I won't be in the van. No. We're in Eden. We've made it. And we've made it to Boyd's Tower. Something that was originally trying to be a lighthouse. But Mr. Boyd actually never got approval from the government. But it was never a lighthouse. He just built a big ass tower. And then the local whalers started using it to spot whales. Wow. So it's just a lookout tower. So we're gonna go check that out. But the drive in to the national park, coming down from the hill, you just see all the water, it, the beaches. It looks incredible. The weather has turned it on today. Mm. And so we are excited to just explore the area. This is a New South Wales National Park. So it's not free, just so you know. It is $8 per vehicle per day. Unlike how it was at Mungo National Park where you actually needed eight physical dollars with, you know, notes and change and all that kind of stuff and slip it into the little box. They do have F post here, which is pretty good. I will say though, it's touchscreen in the middle of a national park and the weather blasts it. Not everything needs to be a touch screen, you know, just a next button will do. A physical yeah. next button. Anyway, let's go see what this tower is all about. To be honest, it feels like we've left Victoria. The weather is warm here in New South Wales and we're just over the border. It's the weirdest thing. Is that a lyre bird? Oh, cool. Oh, really? Well, I have to go slow. And there's a tiny little finch as well. Yeah? So beautiful. We'll go real slow. <laughs> so we didn't get to see the lyre bird statue when we were in orbs. But we got to see the real thing in that bush right there. Well, we couldn't get footage, but the tail was insane. He's around the corner. If we go around the corner, we might catch him. A bunch of rosellas just flew over our heads. This spot feels magical. I just can't stop looking at it. It's so blue. The water is crashing against the rocks. You got the hills in the distance. The sky is just looking magnificent with the blue skies, clouds. The sun is beaming down. I'm actually hot. Mm. Like Jamie is hot. That's a miracle in itself. Ocean is just flat. You can see why this would be such a great area to see whales. Mm. and dolphins. There's this walk along this track called the Lighthouse Walk, which is a multi-day walk and has a couple of campsites along it. If you did a walk along this coastline for a few days, I could see why. Camping along this coastline from lighthouse to lighthouse, that might be an upcoming series. I could see why <laughs> you'd want to do that. To the tower. What the heck? You did not expect this. But Oh, jeez. <laughs> you can see the red rocks right here. Oh, my God. It just drops off. Oh, my God. I did not expect that turning that corner. That is, wow. That's incredible. The red and the blue. That's incredible. Wow. Creepy. Wow. Boyd's Tower alone feels like it's worth the $8. This national park is massive and it feels like with the multi-day walking trail here, we could do a couple of episodes just in this park. It's so beautiful. Honestly, I was not I don't know what I was expecting, but it's definitely exceeded my expectations. Come here. The roads to Boyd's Tower are dirt roads, corrugated, not four wheel drive. They'd probably be pretty bad in the rain because they are dirt roads, but there is a lot of corrugation down there. All right, we 
have made our way down to the Davidson whaling station and the roads to get in here were wild. It says it's not suitable for caravans or trailers, but it almost wasn't suitable for us, okay? It wasn't DJ suitable, but we made it down. <laughs> Worst roads we've been on for this road trip. Yeah, yeah, they were pretty bad. And now we are here at the whaling station. So apparently, back in the day, the, the orcas or the killer whales, they used to help the aboriginals harvest whales. So they used to extract whale oil here. And this is like one of the last operating sites that's still here in Australia. Obviously, they're not still harvesting the whales, but it's still standing, I suppose. It was the longest running landside whaling station in all of Australia and it's the last one left standing and it was the last one left to close as well. So it's a pretty historic little site that's just tucked away in this forest. It's so crazy to me to think that the orcas were helping the humans to to harvest the whales here, which is crazy. It's crazy. The orcas were helping the the orcas were helping the aboriginals harvest killer whales. Oh, sorry. Yeah. The No. No. Orcas are killer whales. Oh, orcas are killer whales. So, so yeah, it's just so wild to me that the orcas were helping them harvest other whales. Like, I don't know, that just blows my mind. You know, it's like they understood what the aboriginals were trying to do. Like, I knew that they were smart, but that's just a whole other level of like brain power. <laughs> <laughs> what would they be benefiting from, from helping humans do that you know what i mean it's Maybe just the wild humans were throwing some off cuts back into the water like do orcas eat other whales we're walking down here it's a little hilly but the weather's nice the sun's starting to set so we might not take off everything on our to-do list today but i'm still glad we got to come here Oil down the whale fat to turn it into oil. What a view to work in, huh? We made it down to the Davidson family beach, and when you're at the old whaling station, you can actually see the old Davidson homestead, which was completely self-sufficient throughout the entire whaling operations, and they lived in it all the way up until the late 1950s. When the Davidsons were finally done, they shut down whaling, and a completely different family moved onto the land, bought the land off them, and built another cabin right next to it. Up until about the late 80s, early 90s, and that's when the New South Wales government eventually bought the land, bought the entire block, and restored the old Davidson cottage next to the new house. New, by now it looks quite old. And then brought in this walkway that goes right down onto the beach, that shows you exactly where they would harvest the whales, extract the blubber, and from the whale fat, boil that right there on the beach shore and turn that into usable oil so they could sell to all the oil candles and all the waxworks all throughout the region. What they also show you is exactly why the orcas were helping the humans hunt down other whales. Orcas were after other whales' calves, the baby whales, from different migration patterns. That's the reason why they were working with the ancient aboriginals to help actually hunt down other whale pods. It's a fascinating little journey as you walk through the grounds of this land and read through everything that was going on throughout the history of it all. Incredible. Yeah. All right, there's only one thing left to do before we head to camp. Cold plunge. Honestly, I needed that. We've been running around all day filming. I was heating up. All right, we'll see you at camp. We are driving back to camp after the cold plunge and an eagle was just in the middle of the road eating the roadkill and he just flew off so majestically. It was massive. This spot is so special. The road genuinely feels like 
the Great Alpine Road, the sun setting, the trees, everything just looks so majestic right now. I just like, I feel like we're only scraping the surface on this road trip and tomorrow is our last day. It's not fair. We have to come back to the Eden area because we truly, two days, it has not been enough for us. <laughs> He's down the hill. We've officially committed to this. Let's see how this goes in the morning. I hope this camp spot's worth it. I feel a lot better after seeing this at the bottom of the hill. That's right. We'll get out of here. We'll make it. <laughs> morning I can literally see my breath right now last night we pulled up to Newton's Crossing and this is the campsite that we were a little worried about because there's a bit of a hill to get out we still don't know if we'll be able to get out but we had a relaxing night the stars came out to play it was amazing we sat around the fire for a little bit and then cozied up inside it was such a long day yesterday the cold punch was so beautiful in that river around sunset. It's been a great time. I can't believe that we are here on our last day of this road trip. We head home tomorrow. But we're about to go do our morning cold plunge in this gorgeous creek or river or whatever it is. I'm truly not ready for it because I can see my breath right now. But the sun's out, the blue skies are out, so I think it's going to be another great day. Tell it's cold this morning. Oh, Newton's Campground. This is a phenomenal little campsite, okay? The stars last night out here, we are out in the middle of the forest in New South Wales and it feels like it. There are trees everywhere. There is a very small path to get down to this campsite. And just once you do make it out here, you do feel like you are absolutely in the middle of nowhere. I love this little campsite. The roads to get in, they're dirt roads. There is one road in particular, once you're already inside the campgrounds officially, past the day picnic areas, that is going to be a bit of a pain if it's raining. Any four wheel drive will be able to handle it, but we've seen nothing but two wheel drives down here so far, so that's a good indication of whether or not they can actually make it down. You'll see how it goes in the rain. As for the campsites themselves, they're these awesome flat areas, but they are all gravel like this road that I'm standing on. So if you are bringing tents, make sure to bring a good hammer as well because it is quite firm gravel. Can they fit caravans? Maybe, if you go car, caravan, side by side, you'll get one in each spot. Then you'll get four cars and caravans. That's about how much room there is up here. But as for tents, it's about two or three tents per spot two vans per spot. There is plenty of room. I'd say there's about 15 campsites here overall. At night, all you can hear is the river streaming past. In fact, right now, all you can hear is the river streaming past. There's a toilet block. It is quite far away. It is right up by the front entrance and to get to the campsites, you do have to drive to the back. So it is a bit of a hike to the toilet block if you don't have your own with you, like if you're in an RV or a van. But overall, this campground is phenomenal. It is so nice hearing the water, knowing how close it is, knowing that it's a nice big stream, having so many flat, empty places for people to come and camp and they're all sort of designated. So even when it is busy, you're not really all on top of each other. This is a great, great campsite. If you're planning a group camping trip, this has to be one of the ones that you must go to. It is time for our morning cold plunge. I'm not ready, I'm not ready. People are staring at us. People are staring at us. People are staring at us. <laughs> I mean, we're standing in the middle of a forest with a tripod talking to ourselves, but it is what it is. And we were just flying the drone and I just crashed the drone. So, you know what? The stairs are totally justifiable, but stop staring at me. Everyone watches YouTube these days, all right? We know that people film themselves. Like it's not a foreign concept. 
So why do people still have a stare? Okay, why, why? Okay, now I'm just procrastinating so I don't have to do the cold plunge. Are you ready? I'm ready. Well, we gotta hate the car up and then I'm ready. Let's go. What's wrong with us? <laughs> I'm freezing. This is our spot. Oh! Every time. Every time. <laughs> it sucks. <laughs> but then after it's so good. That was so good. Yeah. We are off for our last full day of adventures before we hit the road. Oh no. Let us know in the comments, what was your favorite part of this video? Honestly, the National Fine. Park, I, I wish that we had more time to explore more of it, but for $8, I could definitely see us doing a trip back here and just making a whole day dedicated to the National Park and exploring that. I think $8 is such a reasonable price to be able to explore such a beautiful national park from what we've seen, mm. from the little that we've seen. Mm. Or after we release those canoe episodes, would doing the long walk over a couple of nights be something that you'd be interested in seeing us do? Put that down there in the comments as well. Camping mm. lighthouse to lighthouse in a national park, that would be sick. Mm. The only thing is it's really hard to find national parks that you can get drone shots in, those beautiful landscape shots, but it's all about the adventure, we'll not the drone shot. We'll figure it out. All right, we are going to warm up in the van. Thank you so much for watching. Consider subscribing. This, this is, is the series finale, finale of our South, South Coast, Coast, Coast road, road trip. trip. We've spent the last six days traveling through the East Gippsland coast of Victoria, exploring free campsites and things to do and see as we made our way to the South Coast. And in true Doug and Jamie fashion, we spent the week eating our body weight in s'mores, pushing our fear of heights. He backs up so close to the edge. I'm like, we're gonna go off the mountainside. And tested more dirt roads than this van probably should handle. This is the day of the corrugated roads. But so far we've made it work. Yesterday we hit up a national park, watched an eagle eat some roadkill, stayed at one of our favorite campsites to date, and did one of our favorite cold dips to date. Today is our last 24 hours in New South Wales, and we thought what better way to end this series than a full day exploring this gorgeous town of Eden. Cold plunge was one of my favorites. Oh. If you couldn't tell, I held it for so long. Oh. 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 I'm going crazy. Look at where we are. I'm so proud of myself. Well I'm gonna count when I'm editing to see how long I held it. What a way to start the last day of the series. I'm not ready to go home. This has been so much fun and I feel like I just got to Eden. I just, I, I could spend a whole week here. Yeah, we're definitely coming back to visit this region again sometime in the future. Yeah. We gotta go warm up, get on the road, and finish this full day of exploring, which I'm really not ready for. We got a lot to squeeze in today. All right, the moment of truth. We are about to leave Newton's Camp Crossing. Will we make it up the hill? We'll be right. Well, He's about right. to launch it up this hill. Send it, boys! We done! We made it up! We made it up the hill! We made it up the hill! <laughs> now I have to walk up the hill. <laughs> Come on! How'd it feel? Easy. I guess it was super dry today. Like sometimes it just slips and slides and we feel the ass kicking out, but easy to- I think I had more trouble getting up the hill than the van. Welcome to Quarantine Bay. We have made it to Quarantine Bay, which is named that way because back in the day, a ship quarantined here that had a smallpox epidemic on it. And unfortunately, a lot of people died and they buried them all in a communal graves on the shore. Up to 200 of them. 
That's wild. Quarantine Bay is opposite Boys Tower, which you would have seen in last week's episode. And this entire area is stunning, no matter what side you look at it from. Plus, there are a couple of pelicans located on the edge of the shore, and we know that this one is super excited to see them. Um, I, I just had a little freak out in the car. Jamie, insert the freak out here. <laughs> Talking about this day, it might be the day that I meet a pelican. Oh! Do you think they'll let me pet them? No. Okay. But that big bastard might not move. Look at him. They're so big. Look at he's plopped. Oh, they're plopped. I love them. I just love all animals. I just want all animals to be happy. <coughs> it's so pretty here. I'm sorry. Can we just have to be sorry. Can we spend the day here? Everywhere oh, we've gone it. today, I'm like, let's just spend the day here. Uh, I'm moving to Eden. Is this where we're buying our off-grid cabin? Yeah. In Eden? Maybe. <laughs> because I just love pelicans. I love all animals, okay? All right, we already know this. Let's go try and get close. <laughs> He's looking at me. All right, I'm gonna handheld this. <laughs> He's looking at me. I love him already. Oh, I'm gonna name them all Pelly. It's just so beautiful. The views are incredible. The mountains you can see in the background off in the distance. And the pelican. You can see they prefer those rocks way out on the distance because the bird shit just stops halfway through. So they really prefer being out on the edge of those rocks based on the accumulation of shit on these rocks. Back to you, Douglas. No way we could come to Eden and not check this place out. Have a look. Wow. The waves are so big today. Wow. So if you come here, you gotta walk off to the right. Way down in the right is where you'll find the rock pool. Now getting into the rock pool, let's see what happens. This is one of the most unique and pretty swimming holes we have ever been to. The way that the rock pool sits right up against the ocean and you can hear and feel the waves crashing in around you. Woo! What a spot! Alright Eden, what else do you got for us? Who gets this around? Eden has turned the weather on today! Welcome to the Eden whale watching platform. This is it. This is Eden's official whale watching platform. Now there are whale walks as well, but I have to say, right, we've been in Eden for a couple of hours now, and it feels like all of Eden is a whale watching platform. Just walking along the beach, I saw four dolphins while we were getting ready to go for our swim. Boyd's Tower felt like a whale watching platform. The drive in, the bridge felt like a whale watching platform. Yeah. This whole region is just this big, vast open bay, and it is stunning here. Eden has truly already won our hearts, and we already want to do just a whole like three days in Eden. So, walking up to this platform, we saw two eagles flying over us. Doug's just looking out, and I'm like, Doug, look up. There's an eagle literally over your head. Wild. And I've never seen so many eagles in my life, and I like, that's not even an exaggeration. It's like the local bird of Eden. Like we get crows and we get seagulls. Pigeons. Eden <laughs> Eden gets eagles, beautiful eagles. So obviously we are here in the off season. It's not whale watching season. It says between August and November in the early mornings on a clear still day is the best time to come here to watch the whales. And they say to look out for them to do their little 
breathing blowhole thingy. I just read that the blowhole can rush out of the whale at up to 450 kilometers an hour, which is actually insane. Considering like some of the fastest roads we've driven on on this road trip are 100 kilometers an hour. Four which times is, faster than my driving. That's insane. <laughs> and it's just rushing out, no big deal, and then they're on their way. I can just imagine how busy it would get during whale watching season. For me, I've never seen a whale in real life. I think it would just be such an incredible experience, and I like, I, I, I'm coming back to Eden. Eden, I love you. He's got a fish. Oh! He's got a fish in his pool. Another eagle just flew overhead with a fish in its back claws as it was flying across the sun. You can see the sun shining through the pink of the fish. Doug, eagles only have black back claws. They don't have front claws. <laughs> its claws were tucked up behind it. There's these luxury apartments that are across from the whale watching platform and I think it would be an amazing base to come do like three days in Eden, a week in Eden, a lifetime in Eden. <laughs> so maybe, maybe an upcoming series. Be down for their three days in Eden video. We're here at the Eden War Memorial and it has water stations. Eden has been providing public showers, water stations, and here for Do we have time for a quick workout? A few moments later. One, two. <laughs> I don't need this after climbing two mountains. I, I was thinking that. I was like, we need the upper body equipment. Oh, for this one. oh God, it's burning. Yeah. Lower. Yep. Yep. We're just leaving the Eden Lookout and we just learned about this pod of whales called False Killer Whales, mate. Insane. And they would sometimes follow along the fishing boat, swimming alongside them to follow the squids as well. Another thing I'm learning about Eden is she's a hilly one. We're driving up lots of hills, we're walking up lots of hills. She's very hilly. She's beautiful, there's lots of public toilets, barbecues, picnic areas all over Eden. Public toilets, public showers. I like it. I like it a lot. One day we want to rent one of these for the weekend or like a long weekend and do a road trip on one of them. We wouldn't want to buy one, but I think it would make a fun trip. Have you ever done it? Should we do it? What do you think? You don't see that giant ass thing? No. Right here. <laughs> oh, he's turning. We are down at the Eden Wharf and we just saw a stingray. We still haven't seen a kangaroo this week. Unreal. It's just rude. As we're driving through Eden, I've seen so many houses that just have either like a painting of an orca or just like a whale statue tail in their yard, just paying homage to the history of Eden. And I just think it's so cute. I love how the locals have just embraced the history of this place. What a unique spot. It is beautiful. And if you are someone that grew up watching Free Willy like I did, I love that movie. I need to watch that. We need to watch it tonight if we have if we have reception. Welcome to the Eden 
killer whale museum. So this is a perfect rainy day activity. We are not going to go to the museum today because we have to leave some things to do for our next time we come to Eden because we are definitely coming back. 100%. But apparently there's like whale artifacts in there. I think it would be really cool and interesting. That's stuff that I kind of like. And it's only $15 entry. That might be a lot for some people out there, but for me, comparing that to a lot of the museums and like activities, things to do, I feel like most things are like $35 to $50 these days. So I feel like $15 is pretty reasonable. The location though, can we talk about the location? The views from here, which I feel like we say that everywhere we've been in Eden, you are going to get views. You are going to get like perfect whale watching, dolphin spotting views. And this spot is no different. Considering how much of the history of this place that we've seen already from Quarantine Bay where the shipwreck was to the old whaler's hut to Boyd's Tower, I can't imagine how much of that is actually condensed down once you get inside of the proper museum where it's paid entry. We've just been to free places. So if you don't want to waste your road trip as you're passing through Eden and it is a rainy day, like Jamie said, this is one of those spots that I would definitely be going to. And even if it is a nice sunny day and you want to squeeze in just one more nice place to look at the ocean, the view here is banging. Get some fish and chips, come sit outside the museum and take in all the views. You can't go wrong when it comes to views in Eden. The center of Eden had this quaint, small town vibe to it. So many cute little local shops to explore, places to eat and drink. And then you would just turn the corner from the main strip of shops to these breathtaking, sweeping, landscapes, views of the bay. And it felt like one of those beach towns that you'd see in the movies. I couldn't get enough. They're so cute! I want to keep them. We're at the Reflections Holiday Park in Pambula. There is a dump point here just inside the gate that according to Wikicamps, the staff say that anyone is welcome to come and use. Unfortunately, there's no staff here to ask right now. So I'm going to assume that Wikicamps is telling us the truth. We're going to get our head and use it. If you've been here, please let us know. Is it open for everyone to use? We just arrived here at the Long Stocking Brewery. It is about 20 minutes north of Eden. We are hanging for a feed right now. So we're going to go in and see what this place is all about. The purple swamp ends. Six, One. seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. He's around here somewhere, it's no big deal. I'm sure he'll be fine, whatever. Is the beer worth it? I don't know. My belly. That was okay. good. That is just that what we good. needed. When we were on our way to the dump point, we saw this building mm. and it caught our eye. It's so unique. It looks like a barn from the road. It's just got all these little shops in it, like flower shops, has a cafe. It's so pretty. It's so pretty and it's just a vibe. And it was just what we needed at the end of a long, long, long filming day, long, long filming week. I'm not just saying this because it's been a long week of filming. Their pizza and beer is phenomenal. Yeah. I love a good thin crust pizza with lots of meat on it. And this had that. It was like, it was juicy meat, but with a crunchy crust. It hit the spot in all kinds of ways. Yeah. It was so good. Doug got the ham and salami. Classic. And I got a margarita with some prosciutto. Mm. And it was so, so good. Mm. There was so much flavor in the sauce as well. So, um... If you're looking for a feed and you don't want to cook over the campfire tonight, you can go check them out if you're in Eden. It's about 20 minutes north of Eden, so it is not in Eden, but it is worth the drive. And we just met the owner of the cafe next door, and she has a cat named Kelly. She was just telling us about her backstory. She's a, a rescue, so if you do come here, make sure you keep an eye out for little Kelly, okay? But we are finally making our way back to our campsite for the tonight. So, see you there. We will see you there.
time to relax. All right, we are here at our very last campsite on this Eden South Coast. Whatever New South Wales road trip, whatever you want to call it. It's time to crack open this baby and let the bubbles begin. I'm really gonna miss it here. We have this whole campsite to ourselves. We are all settled in for the night and we are gonna go and enjoy our time at our very last campsite on our Eden road trip. Let's go. Good morning. It's another chilly morning. It is so quiet out in this forest. Once the loggers were done, and they were done maybe five, six, we've heard two cars go past us the entire time. Not a single car this morning. It's been so quiet. All you can hear is just the river rushing, which is wild because I thought the river was a little bit of a walk in, maybe a two, three minute walk in, but it sounds like it's right next to the camp. It's just river and birds. Anyway, this is our last morning at camp, so time to pack up and get ready for one last dip in that river. The Imley Creek picnic area. It's two wheel drive the entire way in. Paved road all the way right up to when you actually get to the Imley Creek picnic area. Now, the car park is all bollarded off or there's logs thrown about all over the car park. So vans, RVs and camper vans can only stay in the car park area. So having said that, there's three good spots for big rigs. We put our van horizontally, took up two spots, but if you slid in, you'd get six big rigs in here or three cars with a camper van attached. It's that kind of a setup. But as you go further into the actual picnic area, there's lots of great spots for tenting. And then it breaks off down into the creek and a day use area. There is a toilet block and that is about it. There is no reception. It is right next to a main road. So during the day, there will be a lot of logging trucks going past, but at night, like I said, there were maybe two cars the entire night. There hasn't been a single car all morning. This spot is absolutely gorgeous. You feel like you are in a dense, deep forest. It's a paved road the whole way here. So I guess you are in a dense, deep forest, but it's very, very accessible. A wonderful night to come and stop out on the road. What do you reckon, Jamie? I'm ready to do the cold plunge. Are you almost done? Yeah. <laughs> I guess it's time to do the cold plunge. We got the van on, getting nice and warm for us when we get back. Another day, another cold plunge. <sighs> the moments before a cold plunge, they don't get easier. And he's just taking his time. I'm out here in shorts. I think I'm gonna go wait in the van. I'm gonna miss this spot. I'm gonna miss this road trip. I'm not ready to go home. I'm not ready to go home. Uh, you know what that means, it's time to go home and plan the next one. So if you do have any ideas on road trips that you've done in the past or like places that we could use as inspiration to make a road trip to, let us know in the comments. We're walking with you. <laughs> the trouble is trying to find a way to get in. But Doug's walking further upstream to try and find a good access point because this is like a literal gorge. It goes right down. So we want to make sure we can have safe access out or we'll be stuck in here with hypothermia until we go downstream. <laughs> so yeah, but come check it out. It's so pretty, honestly. All the camp spots we've stayed at on this series have been incredible. We've been so spoiled. Look at this view, look at this view. Stop it. Stop it, Mother Nature, stop. You are too beautiful today. Mother Nature, why? How? Where, when, how? Oh, shit, The access here, not the best. Oh, that's so... That's just strange. Ooh, that one moves. <laughs> this is 
this is it. <laughs> ah! Hold it and then get the fuck out of here, okay? We're Where? in a gorge. <laughs> Where are we? We're in a gorge. Oh, it's gone in me. One. We're here. We're doing we're this. Here. We're doing this. We're going to get our neck okay. in. We're going to hold it. One, two, three. <gasps> One, two. <gasps> I can't feel my hands. Six, seven, Jesus. eight, nine, ten. <sighs> oh. Oh, I can't feel my hands. Oh. oh, that's cold. We did it. We did it. We did it. I'm still in. I know. I cannot feel my hands. I, I, you're like, gonna regret saying it. Then, actual thermophobia. <laughs> yeah. Thermoph <laughs> thermophobia is setting in. Hyperthermia. That one. I can't get up if you don't get up. Oh, I'm up through here. No, but I'm gonna step and launch. Oh, you don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> hey, come on, it's time to go home. It's over. Oh, it's over. A hot drink after that cold plunge? Man, what a week. <laughs> what a week. Uh, let us know, what was your favorite part? of the entire series. Was it us nearly getting caught at a 90 mile-esque beach campground, the Patterson, the Pattinson's campground? Petman's. Petman's campground, that long, almost four wheel drive track. Or was it Jamie managing to pretty much climb a mountain? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, we've done a lot this week. We've done a lot. I hope that you've enjoyed this series. We had so much fun this week. It just exploring so many new places. We jam-packed this series and the days were long. We were easily doing 10 to 12 hour days of filming, but I hope it's been worth it for you because we had so much fun and I hope that some of you out there can recreate even parts of this road trip. I think that you would really have the best time because we did. If you know this region and you know that there's anywhere in particular that we missed, leave it down there in the comments because we are definitely not done with this region. We are coming yeah. back for sure. So please let us know if there's anything you know about that we need to go to. Let us know what your favorite part of the series was. Was there a funny moment, a scary moment, a whatever moment, a beautiful moment? Let us know your favorite parts in the series because it helps us know what you guys like seeing, what's fun, what's entertaining, all that kind of stuff because there's a lot of footage to go through. So we could easily chop things out if we're like, oh, that doesn't need to be in it. But if we know that it's stuff that you guys like or enjoyed or whatever, then we know what to make sure we include. We have a very big driving day. We are driving six hours home and off to plan the next series. With that, thank you so much for watching. Consider subscribing, and I hope to see you tuning in to another video soon. Bye. Bye. Back to Victoria we go. Boo. <laughs>